Until real late last night, dudes. Real late. I am a little tired. I'm a little tired. I'm a little wired. And I think I deserve some appreciation. How about them Red Sox? I can't win them all, dude. Can't win them all. Can't hit two grand slams in every game, dude. You know, it is what it is. Did you have fun? It was loud. It was loud. Fun, but loud. <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator F-18 is dropping on the 18th. Hey. It's, it's special, dude. <sighs> oh, God. So, hey, um, here, here. So, uh, I got, I got something to show you. I got something to show you there, guy. Ready? Oh. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, that's why I kind of stopped talking for a second there. I'm just, hmm. Oh, <sighs> Supposedly, it's totally stacked. They've. This was last night. They took these pictures last night. 
supposedly. He said the seats were partially obstructed. It had blocked the ninth inning by any chance. They were the only thing that they obstructed was the um, the center field scoreboard, dude. We could see the plate just fine here. You want you want to see the view? I'll, I'll show you. Uh, it was a it was a it was a fun game. It was a fun game to watch until the end, but uh, yeah, that was the view. We we had a great view. It was really 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 fun you're not going to get you ditch us again again tonight are you i don't know you're the guys you you're the guys that said go um yeah that ninth inning sucked you know I didn't realize that there was some rule. There's some new rule that they must have added where you, you know, you can have four strikes and uh, thrown against you and still be up at bat. I didn't, uh, I didn't really realize that. Must be some new rule that I'm not uh, too familiar with. Any home runs? Yeah, there was a couple home runs. Digging the stash? Thank you. Yeah. Um... How many touchdowns did the ball guy dunk? Yeah. The game is at four today? Four? No. No, I thought it was... Hmm, early game. I thought it was five. Hmm. Uh, Fouface, there weren't that many hits, dude. Until, until the end. At the beginning and the very end. Uh, yeah. Five oh eight first pitch. So I'm keeping up my end of the deal. Yeah. Um, so every, both teams played great. Like it was a good game and I'm not going to say it wasn't a good game. Like the, this series series has been a little bit questionable with the, uh, with the calls on both sides. There was a couple of stuff that I saw in game two that I didn't really like, but I didn't want to say anything. But last night's game was pretty bad. Both teams got hosed. Just the Red Sox got hosed a little bit more. Uh, but, hey, I mean, what I mean about balls and strikes is, okay, so if you don't know much about baseball, all right, if the ball goes over this thing, the house-shaped thing that's called home plate, if the ball goes over home plate, usually that's a strike. So in the ninth inning with two runners on, two outs, two strikes. Uh, Nate Evaldi, the, the pitcher for the Red Sox, who he put him in to basically throw this, throw this pitch, right? And he threw it, and it goes right over the plate, and the umpire didn't call it. He didn't call it. Uh, you know, and once again, look, that's not... That would have gotten the Red Sox out of the inning. Instead, he called that a ball, and the next the next pitch that he threw scored a couple of runs, and then after that, they scored more runs, and the Astros did what they do when they get when they get going on offense, right? The Red Sox ended up like losing like nine to two or something. It was pretty bad. It's pretty. It was pretty embarrassing. Um, it still sucks. Like it, that, that that blows. But you know, like I said, I'm not gonna say that the Strohs didn't get a couple of bullcrap calls too. You know, they just came out on top this time. I'm not blaming the umpires. The Red Sox only scored two runs. You don't score two runs in the postseason in the ALCS and expect to win. <laughs> That's just not how that works. It sucks, but 
Yeah, I don't know. But it was a really good game up until... that. Well, there was one or two things in the first inning where I'm like, hmm, okay. Uh, straight up, the guy, uh, uh, an Astros pitcher, uh, Granky threw a strike, threw something right over the plate. The umpire didn't call it. <laughs> he, he didn't call it a strike. And then the next, the next... The next at bat when the next pitch went out of the park. So, like, there was bull crap on both sides. Like, and I, you know, it, it is what it is. That's, that's baseball, man. I mean, the other thing is that I'm not, I wasn't really expecting the Red Sox to win last night. I wanted them to win, but I don't think they were going to win. There's no way the Astros are going to roll over and die. They're, that's not, that's not that, they're not that type of team. Do the Ems do replays or calls or anything? You can challenge certain rulings, swag, like football, but not not a call at the plate like that, which really sucks. Like, I don't, I don't see any conceivable scenario where that's not a strike. The ball is, like, right over the plate. Like, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Who won last night? Oh, the Astros won. They played really well. The, their their pitching came out their pitching came out real good last night. They they held us to like three hits. It was really good. It's not high foo face. It, it well it was a well it was it was a curveball, but it was in the top right corner. Uh, yeah, twenty three missed calls by by the home plate umpire. He missed he missed twenty three calls. He got twenty three twenty three calls wrong. And uh, yeah, that sucks, dude. Uh, but hey. That's baseball. It's at the umpire's discretion. You know, that's... The umpire's strike zone can be a freaking trapezoid or a parallelogram. Like, it, it, it can be... It, it could be a star or a freaking umbrella, like Squid Game umbrella. Like, it could be that as long as it's consistent. That's, that's, the, that's one of the things with baseball. It depends on the umpire, you know? No, not a new umpire. That guy's been umpiring for 20 years. It, it, it's like, and I looked it up just out of curiosity. He's literally one of the worst rated umpires in the league, like in terms of accuracy. I'm like, oh, that's good. He's giving everything to the right. Yeah, and once again, that ain't an excuse. The, the same umpiring crew made a couple of crap calls that let the Red Sox win in game two. So... You live by the sword, you die by the sword, man. It friggin' sucks. But I'm not about to take that the win away from the Strohs. They played great. They played great. I it, it was friggin' I had to break up a freaking fight. Well, not had to. I, I broke up a fight at the end of the game. It was great. It was like, guys, calm down. It's a baseball game. Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, okay, him it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, But, uh... I know about the Dodgers game, Russell. They were showing it. Yep, yep. Where are the Astros from? Like each team has their home state. Where are the Astros from? Houston. Hey Linux, what's going on? Fun fact, across four major sports, only 11 teams have, an, have a name that doesn't end with an S. How many can you name? Red Sox, White Sox. Uh, I, I forget. I don't know. Uh, I if I thought about it, I could probably do it. Yeah, they uh, Jenny's GoFundMe for her medical bills went through uh, Jared Isaacman. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I, uh, I I don't know anymore because everybody keeps changing the names. Like they changed the Redskins to the football team. I guess that's one of them, right? 
you don't know who Jared Isaacman is? Linux Jared Isaacman, he donated like, I think it was like nine 9,000 bucks. He's the guy that flew on Inspiration 4. He's the commander of the Inspiration 4 mission, which was pretty rad. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Go fund me for medical bills. Go you'll say the best place in the world. Sorry, name slipped by mine. I did. I did see the nine thousand dollar donation. Right on. Hey, Jolly, what's going on? How you doing? NSF just mentioned you about building Boca Chica and KSP for them to show on stream. What am I doing now? What did Das just say? I didn't. Oh, what did Das just? Oh no! What did what did I just get roped into? <laughs> Frick! What what just happened? You should do it, Remo. Are you voluntolding me th to do things again? Congratulations, soldier. You just volunteered. I have to make Mechazilla, don't I? Because they were doing a live stream. Here. Look. Here is some quick space news. Peep that. Last, please. So what's on the agenda today for KSP? I'm trying to figure that out, Flykin. Yep, now you need to make the catch arms DOS rope you into it. Discovery, go at throttle up. Juice Bot, 33 month resub. Inspired by the 154 project, I put a 1.5 inch lift on my Prius and I'm upping the tires from 215.45 to 225.50. Why in the name of Jeb would you do that? What, why, what? I gotta make this. Oh. Das said, my buddy EJ would be able to build the launch tower so we can show on stream how it's supposed to work. But yeah, Reza, the Dodgers game was good, man. It was pretty cool. <laughs> I just asked Doss, what did you just rope me into, man? Well, why did you do that? <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, EJ is too scared. Oh, look out for serious master of psychology. All right. Yeah, I know, Thomas. I've been watching the NSF stream for a couple hours. I literally woke up and it popped up and I'm like, hmm, okay. Go back three minutes into the VOD. It's fine, dudes. I don't need to... I don't need to see the thing. So, build that, huh? How the heck are we going to do that? Yeah, she's, she's big, dude. Freaking catch arms, man. 
I tried and failed doing psychology for a year at university, so I believe in you. You can do it. Go back four and a half minutes and listen. I'm all right. Hey, Dutch guy, thanks for the raid, man. Hey, Blue Viper, thanks for the raid. Thanks for coming in, Raiders. Dutch guy, thank you very much. Blue Viper, thank you for coming in. Go on, EJ, you can do it. I have one built and working if you want to take a look. Holy mother of facial hair. Dash, bloody perfect. Thanks, Randy. <laughs> College is 16 to 18 here. College is 16 to 18? That's called high school. Man, it's called high school. It's called high school. I studied that at uni. I studied that at university. I studied that at the... Yeah, that's you. That's what you sound like. Good luck. This thing's gonna be, gonna be one heck of a thing to make with stock parts. Hmm, savage. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at it. I'm looking to see how we can make this. What the heck did you just walk into? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's, it's good. I mean, how to rock link yours up. Sure, why not? Like, I don't... Yeah, hmm, okay. How, I'm trying to build it in my head right now. How would I even do this? Uh, how would we, I mean, how am I gonna make the pulley? How's that gonna work? Now, you know what? We can use something similar to a crane. That could that could work in that regard. It's just how are we gonna pull it? How are we gonna pull the damn thing? I don't. Yeah, no, no. I, I'll. Yeah, I know. I know. Fellas. All right, how to rock? Let me see. Let's take a look. See. Okay. I know, Jack, it's amazing. All right, how to rock? Let's see. <laughs> Dude, oh, that's legit. <laughs> that's terrific. <laughs> Look at that. Why are they trying to catch rockets? Because putting landing gear on them is too complicated. Impressive. Most impressive. That's pretty cool, man. And this isn't more complicated? Yeah. 
And now you want to do it? Uh... Do you think it'll come in like that? I sort of thought they would aim off the tower and slide into it at the last minute. Foo face, if I had to guess, all right. I think I I think I figured out how they're going to do this, okay? So let's just look at like a top-down view, right? So here's your orbital launch mount, right? There's the disconnect for the OLM, right? And then you have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? That's the OLM, okay? Your catch tower is right here, right? And then the catch tower is right here. Right? And then you have your, you have the catcher arm on the trolley like this, right? Right? And then your main pivot point on your hinges is right here. So you can, your hinges can be like this, right? Well, they actually go kind of like that, right? They go out and over like that. So this thing has a degree of motion from here to here, right? So I think how they're going to do this is in the catch position, right? You know, in the catch position, it'll be like that. And then there'll be a hydraulic here and a hydraulic there, right? Right, you have this. How I think they're gonna do it is that the booster is gonna have a little bit of lateral motion when it's coming into land. That's the only, like you wouldn't wanna come top down at this thing because then you're susceptible to windage. You're susceptible to windage if you're coming straight down. If the wind's gonna blow the booster, it's gonna go one way. So if you come in with quote unquote, a little bit of a headwind, right? You're coming in, not a headwind, but it's the same idea. You're coming in, like this with a little bit of sideways velocity. So kind of like how New Shepard lands, like New Shepard lands next to the launch, or stops next to the launch site and kind of moves inward towards the center, right? Literally like that. I think that's what, I think that's the secret here. Because having a little bit of lateral velocity this way, right, will, for the most part, help you a little bit more with windage. Any any sheer windage, it's going this way. You'll still get in. You'll still get inside of the catcher arms. So I think the booster is going to have a little bit of a sideways component, a sideways velocity component to it, and it's going to kind of come in like this and catch it, and like the thing will go down with it, and then it'll catch it and lower. I think that's how that's going to work. Another render uh, from Irk X of catching the booster. Yeah. Does Irk show it? He does. Yeah, see, it, exactly like that. The booster's gonna have some sideways component to it. Manka. The booster's gonna have a sideways component to it. I know, sideways velocity component, sorry. Uh, that's why those conveyor belts are there, because if it gets too close to the, like if it lands and it's too close to the tower, they can move it back in and they can shift it if it rotates. That, if, you, if you're coming in like that, that basically eliminates one of the axes of movement, right? Like, cause when the booster's coming straight down, you're susceptible to left, right, forward and back, and then obviously up and down, okay? You're coming in like this, all right? you basically forward and back, you eliminate that velocity component. So now you only have to worry about going left or right, which the grid fins, the grid fins can compensate for something like that by rolling and pitching the booster. That's part of the reason why the grid fins are like this. You know, the grid fins are, are like that and not like at 90 degrees, uh, like this, right? They're out like that. 
that that would make more sense for more pitch moment or more moment over the pitch axis with the booster. Uh, it would make more sense if the booster if you you're putting more pitch moment on the booster. That means you're relying on pitch to land this thing correctly. See. EJ throwing gang signs. Yeah, that that may be where I picked it up from, Peg, if I had to guess. Dude, I, I go through a, a lot of information on here. I sift through a lot. It's hard to keep track of all of it. That that might be where I think I think Elon did say that in Timmy's interview. It makes sense. It, it, it makes sense. Uh, it, it's like a VTOL, like a Harrier, right? A Harrier has to worry about a lot more things when it's landing as opposed to like a, an, an A320 when it comes into land, right? Like, the Harrier has a lot more to worry about. Rockets are the same way. If you can kind of eliminate that, right? You eliminate one of those axes of movement, right? You could, If you're coming in like this, booster's going to want to go that way. Momentum will carry you in that direction. Hey, Astro, what's going on? I mean, I guess we got to put this to the test, huh? All right, let me load up KSP. I guess we got to put it to the test. Oops. Okay, we might play a little, a couple of days of engineering mode. I'll change the title. Mechazilla X. Experimental build. All right, let's try for it. Let's switch over to engineering mode for the funsies. Boo! We got more mass to play with. Also, Starship Booster is heavier than a Harrier, which helps with the wind shear issue. I agree. How fast is that booster coming down with the catch? T-Man, uh, it's going to be a slow hover. It'll be a slow hover. This thing's going to, like I said, this thing's going to carry a lot of momentum with it. It's not, it's going to be slow. It's going to look like it's slower than Falcon 9. Not necessarily be, but it, 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 it'll look like it's slower. Okay, Sirius, I'm going to put your favorite music on. All right, let's take a look. Engineering mode. Everyone here is insane with how much has been given to help Jenny. Sneaky, what did I say yesterday? What did I say before? Before yes, before like they they were even close to reaching their goal. The spaceflight community looks out for their own, dude. We we really do. It's one of the best communities to be a part of, especially if you're in the content creation. For for space flight, they really do. We really do look out for each other. At least I, I mean, I try to. Everybody seems to pull their weight in that regard. It's a group of good people. Good people to be a part of. Excuse me, one truck. Uh, grab. I forgot to give you guys updates about the truck yesterday. Here, I'll show you. Um. I went and sourced a chrome grill off of a car with a, off of a truck with Michigan patina. Check this out, dude. Look. I got the XLT grill. Complete XLT grill. This one is off of a truck from Michigan, the center. The side is off of a truck off of an F-250 XLT that was uh, made in Canada. It was made at Windsor. So we, we're running full chrome up the front, dude. Look at that. That looks pretty sharp, right? You want to see what you want to see what it looked like before? I'll show you. You missed my last. That's eh, because I hate you. If catching the super heavy booster works, do you think Falcon 9's replacement will be caught rather than self landing? I'm pretty sure Falcon 9's design is kind of frozen. Um. It's kind of frozen, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, they're not gonna change anything. I'm trying to find a close-up shot of the grill, how it looked. 
This is how it looked during Route 154. That's how it looked during Route 154, right? Here, I'll open this in a new tab. That's how it looks now. Cloud Boy, my wife out of the blue told me yesterday, no, you're not buying an old pickup like your Twitch streamers, so don't ask. I laughed so hard I hurt myself. Yeah. Yeah. I still have this grill, and I'm going to keep it because it's that's the, F, that's the F2 shitty grill. I'm keeping that. I'm going to make... You know what we should do? Grab, we should make a negative bracket to hold the grill together so you can, like, hang it up on the wall or something. That would actually be really freaking cool. Should actually do that. It's actually a really good idea. So, yeah. That's what it looked like before. See sub message. Dragon, hope all is well. Just started my final year project synthesizing the catalyst that split hydrogen for the possible use in the future hydrogen economy. That's a thing. Split hydrogen. Oh, that hydrogen economy. My guy. Wasn't there a PDF from the FA with diagrams of how the catch mechanism works? Yeah, kind of. You know what? We should do that more. Because splitting atoms is cool. Splitting atoms is cool. Fusing atoms is cooler. You should learn how to weld atoms together. That'd be pretty sick. But yeah, grab. That's how. Uh, that's how it looked during Route 154. That's how it looks now. I got all this. So this is an XL front bumper and an XLT grill. How was the match yesterday? Uh, my team lost. Everything in that photo is so American. You like it? Dude, it was, it was fun. My team didn't win. Uh, so, Swishio, a couple of things. Baseball games aren't called matches. They're called games. So, like, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be a jerk. Just if you're ever over here and you go to a baseball game, call it a baseball game. Don't call it a baseball match. It's not soccer or, or football. It's not, it's not that. Different. Although, football has been played at Fenway Park. But yeah, it was great, man. I'm the only the only thing that made it suck was that the Red Sox didn't win. The Astros the Astros played great. Like I can't I can't hate. They played fantastic. They did really good. The ninth inning sucked. That was really hard to watch. And I could sit here and say that that call was horse crap, but the Astros got hosed on a couple of calls too. So hey, that's the way it goes. It's the way it goes, man. How much did you yell? Dude, that was the loudest I've ever heard Fenway Park, Sneaky. It was loud. Not rocket launch loud, but like first row at a concert loud. It was very loud. So you know I have to be an honorary Houston fan now since we're moving there. Hey, Grav, how's the weather down in Houston? I've heard it's pretty fair. You're going to be a Stars fan too, you putt. I still love you Giants. Well, speaking of speaking of bad calls. Gee, I didn't realize that a check swing is a strike. I'm not salty at all, Swishio. Swishio, what happened in the game before what happened in the game before, uh, uh, the, the, the first game at Fedway, so two days ago, they're playing, they're going to be playing again in a couple hours. Uh, so as you know, baseball, they don't screw around, dude. You play 160 games every season. Baseball is hardcore. It's a really tough sport. Uh, it's grueling, dude. It, the game isn't too incredibly difficult to play, but you play a lot of it, man. Yeah, Brimo, that's why you got upset when they showed the Red Sox beating the Tigers on the big screen. Mrs. Linux thinks the stadium there is the best. The Green Monster rocks. Linux, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Now, Linux, you have to tell me. Yankees or Mets?
That would be nice. I know somebody who took the headlights. On the bull nose for it. Yeah, the brick nose. Yep, yep. That's cool, Grab. Neither? Oh, all right. Mets all day? Well, I was going to say, City Field is cool. I like City Field because they made it look like Ebbets Field. But it's not Shea Stadium, man. Cubs? Sneaky, where did, what stadium do the Cubs play in? Nope, you've had enough time to Google it. Nope, doesn't count now. You think I know a thing about sports balls? So sneaky, here's a little bit of cool history. You don't have to you don't have to like baseball to know to to like this. Fenway Park was built in 1912. They still use that stadium. That's why people like it. 1912. There you go, Big C. Cub Stadium. Ugh. You ready to talk hockey? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Bruins won the other day. You're required to be a Cards fan, but you're not much of a sports person. Yeah, 1912, dude. Stadium. Baseball has been played in that stadium for a hundred and... What is it? A hundred and... Jeez, almost 110 years. It's pretty awesome. You root for the Saints. Yeah, that's because you're friends with Matt. <laughs> Cries in Tiger Stadium. They never should have done it, Foo Face. They never should have wrecked that stadium. I mean, dude, Comerica Park is cool, right? I've never been, but this is... I'm taking... Basically, this is what Primo says. Comerica's cool, but it's not Tiger Stadium. It's Briggs Stadium, dude. What the heck? You shouldn't. Oh, it should have been like a park or something. And also, you know, for the Yankees fans out there, they never should have gotten rid of Yankee Stadium. The house that Ruth built, you made a cheap copy next door. Are you kidding me? Freaking serious right now? Bro, when when I saw the Foo Fighters, we, I saw the, in 2018, we saw the Foo Fighters at, at Fenway. I sat in the dugout because we had, we had like, Backstage passes. I sat in the dugout, man. I, I sat in the dugout that Babe Ruth sat in. It's hollowed ground, man. And I cleaned it. That's right. The freaking... The, the, the stewards there got so confused. They were so confused. They were like, why are you cleaning it? I'm like, this is hollowed ground, man. And they're like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Keep doing your thing. They just, yeah, they were just happy. That they didn't have to do it, I'm pretty sure. I'm like, it's hollowed ground. How about the old Lions Stadium? The Silver Dome? I'm pretty sure the Silver Dome is an empty field. Dude, being a baseball fan, all, all I wanted to see was that big green wall and looking at the field where legends play. Bandit, if, you, if you're ever up here, I'll take you to Red Sox game, okay? I mean, it's expensive. But I'll take you to a Red Sox game. Let's go, dudes. I'll take you to a Sox game, dude. Absolutely. I took NASA man to a Sox game. Oh, yeah? A little while back. What kind of NHL season is that Florida and Buffalo are leading the Eastern Conference? Early. An early season, dead crew. My home team, Knott's County, was founded in 1862. Played in the same place all those years. That's cool, cooking. It's just cool to me that, you know, it's like it's like Wembley. Wembley Stadium was super old, and then they demolished it in 2012, which is... how Guys, how old was Wembley Stadium? When I was in Boston, I saw Fenway. It was awesome. No, 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 no. There's seeing Fenway, and then there's going to a ball game there, Bandit. Dude, you, you seeing Fenway is cool, and I did drive tough enough. I did drive tough enough to the, the to the game, but we took the train in, so I drove it to the train station. 
cooking that's just not okay all right so you guys you guys are like that too right it's so stupid Wembley Stadium was like legendary are you like that pissed that pissed me off and I'm not even a, I'm not even that big of a football fan like hey dude sorry about the socks bro it's fine Dave who cares Dave it's the ALCS you think the Astros are gonna roll over and die like that not a chance in hell dude no way <laughs> no it's fiction we made it up it's fiction false it's fiction this one was invented by a writer it's false fiction we made it up we made it up we made it up it was a writer total fiction total fabrication we made it up <laughs> space fan it's false total fiction total fabrication all right catch arms i fell asleep in the eighth inning and what oh dude you know Dave, bad calls happen in baseball. And I'm not saying we didn't get hosed by that bad call. The Astros got hosed by a couple of bad calls too. But man, did we come unglued after that. It was like... That completely screwed up our rhythm, dude. It's false. It's Facebook. Fiction. We made it up. Hey, just got off for lunch. Are we fixing the pad? Pilch, I may or may not... Got rope... All right, let me, let me explain. So, NSF is streaming, right? NASA Space Flight is streaming, and here's what they're streaming, okay? False. It's fiction. We made it up. They're, they were streaming putting the catcher arms on, right? Because that's what they did today. They... They put the catcher arms on. Hey Alex, what's going on? They put the they put the catchers on there. So Das on the cast may or may not have said, Oh, my buddy EJ could probably build this in KSP. <laughs> okay. I sh this shouldn't take very long. So, yeah. Okay, let's go. Yeah, six. Yep. I'm right about to sleep, so I won't be here for long, but... It or at least I'm making progress on the behemoth of a tech report I have to send out. Yeah, good job, Alex. <laughs> Places a box of no, go on with the catch arms. Alright. <sighs> okay. Jebizilla. No. Uh. Uh. Space, spaceship, launch, okay. it's not starship, it's spaceship, okay? This will be a perfect way to jump back into some KSP. All right, so how are we going to do this? We gotta cut. We, we have to make a pad base plate, just like before. We gotta make a pad base plate. That's the only way to do this right, because the pad is anchored into the ground. I don't want to use launch clamps. Launch clamps suck. Those things are terrible. So, answer last when you have a moment. I don't want to pilt. Now what's up, dude? How will you control both vehicles at the same time? I'm sorry. Wait, wait what? Oh, um. Science? Yeah. Here's some detailed shots if you're interested. Yeah, sure, How to Rock. Let's take a look. How to, so, How to Rock, you've made one. Let's see. Okay, I see what you did there. 
Grip pads. Okay, yeah, cool idea. All right. Jeez, this is sensory overload. Holy crap. Okay. Alright, yeah, I see what you, I see what you did there. EJ out here trying to counter big launch clamp lobbyists, my man. Uh, okay, so we're in engineering mode today. Engineering mode is uh, kind of my sandbox save for the people that don't know. It's a sandbox save where you can just kind of go ham on whatever you want to do. So let's make out, let's make a base plate. Let's make out a base plate here. Not make out with the base plate. That would be strange. All right, close that out. Auto strut. All right, so, um, hey, how you doing, beautiful? Gotta get those off there. It's a distraction. Um. Thomas, uh, let's, uh, God, I love Fenway Park. All right, Thomas, let's go over here. Let's go to RGV. I need kind of an aerial shot. Eh, that'll work. Oh, God dang, that's cool. It still blows my mind. Okay, how are we going to make this? Nice truck. Merci. Okay, Alex, let's be real. Let's be real. How many strange looks would I get driving this around France? Would people be like, what the hell is that? How many strange looks would I actually get? Would people be like, uh, all right. Stacking? Stacking is going on right now. The NSF stream is up. Ando, in Poland, would people get confused? People would get confused. Dude, we should do that. We should do that just for the reactions. It'll be like Top Gear. It'll be great. Unless you're in the countryside. Pollution de merde. Sacre bleu. You, uh... This is gonna be horrible. Vous merde. Ha ha. I didn't say that right at all, did I? How was the game? It's all right. Yeah, yeah, how can you how can you not like it in Poland? It's Polish colors. It'll it's great. <laughs> Man, was I close? Did I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Ah, ha, ha, you crap. You are crap. You are filth. <laughs> the last inning was insanity. Oh, God. Element, did we come unglued or what? That's kind of embarrassing, man. Like, yeah, the call was bull crap, but, dude. I think in Poland, they'd be like, wow, cool. I'll take that. That's fine. I mean, it is red and white. Just putting it out there. All right, let's go. You kind of missed the verb there. Yeah, I just said you crap. Yeah, I, I know. I don't know how to say you. Uh, what's R? I don't know how to. Th are you going to the mall later? That's what I'm asking. It'd be cool, but still rare. Yeah. All right. Um, we need something like this. All right, let's take a look. People would try and take it in Brazil. Yeah, we don't need to go there. No, no, obrigado. No. Um, the uh, eu precise meet Ford. With de la merde would be the right right way of saying it. <laughs> Merci. 
in, in English, see if we'll play. Uh, good enough. <laughs> I need my furred. <laughs> For future reference, you're a piece of POS. Uh, you're a point of sale. Espeste tas de merde. I love to cuss in French. It's like wiping your ass with silk. I love it. Espeste de tas de merde. Alright, no, it was... It was a movie quote, so it doesn't count. It would not fit in any car park. And, oh, it is a big truck. It's big. I mean, the box, the pickup bed is two meters, over two meters long. It's eight feet, so that's two and a half meters. It's a big pickup bed. It's a utility truck. That's why I like it. I mean, dude, and I'll be honest, it's big for Boston. I was driving into the train station last night. Thing barely fit in a spot. Like, the back end is, like, hanging out the end of the spot, dude. She's big. It's a big truck. And you know, like, that's the crazy part, dudes. That's not a big truck in the States. It's just a utility truck. That's not big for us. I mean, those trucks that you see hauling around Boca Chica, the dualies, the one with the, the truck wheels, the lorry wheels in the back, those are, those are big trucks. Parking that in Italy? No chance. I mean, Swishio, it's not like I need to worry about someone scratching the paint or anything, but... I've seen some new American pickups, and they're longer than the delivery vans. I mean, they're big, dude. And like I said, Ando, those things are, I mean, those things are designed for guys out on the farm where you, like, it needs to be a little bit overkill because there's not a shop. There's not a shop. There's nothing. There's nothing out there. Believe me, I've driven through it. There's nothing out there. Nothing. You guys remember that Route 154 where we drove through New Mexico? There's nothing. There's just nothing. There's just weeds for hundreds of kilometers. Not bears then. And oh, it depends. It depends on where you are. Through New Mexico, probably not bears. Rattlesnakes. Yeah, weeds. Chosen one here. I'll show you. Look. It's nothing but desert for a very long time. Sandworms? No, 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 no. Uh, graboids. But those are only in Nirva uh, Nevada. Nevada. Dude, we drove down a road out of Santa Fe that goes from Santa Fe to I-40. There... Uh, not photos. Roads. 285. That's the road. We drove down this road. Check this out. nothing we drove to i stream driving down this road it's in the vods there is nothing nothing for miles in every direction nothing that's what those trucks are for that's why they build them big like that because dude you live out in the western parts of the u.s right basically anywhere from like here over to here this whole area right there dude <laughs> The closest grocery store is going to be 40, 50 kilometers away. If you want to go get food, easily. There's nothing out there, man. And Primo and I drove across here. We drove right through here, and then we drove up there. Breaking down out there would suck. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it would. It does, in fact, suck. Um, yeah, dude, nothing. And we didn't even see the biggest parts of the Great Plains, dude, when we drove through. Uh, we broke down over here in Vene uh, near Venita. This is where this is where I this is where the truck decided to throw the hub near uh, uh, Venita, Oklahoma. There it is, right there. Yeah, dude, there ain't, ain't nothing out there. Imagine if you lost a tire or something. Yeah, you know what, dudes? It didn't suck. Like those guys were cool. 
Everybody was super nice. That's see, that's the one thing. Discovery, like, hey, Daz, thanks for the host, man. That's the, <laughs> oh boy, that means I now I gotta build it. Uh, that's the one thing about uh, out there. Everybody's super nice because everybody knows that like if you break down out there, it's a big deal. Like, they know that that's no joke. So, like. Not no, not so much in northwest, like northeast Oklahoma. That wasn't too bad. There was civilization around. Uh, if they come, you gotta build it. Yep. So, we gotta make this. How am I gonna do this? We're the wheel decided to yeet. So yeah, that's why. Like for the Euro guys, that's why those they have those big trucks, because that big truck carry has enough fuel to get you wherever. And it's carrying big truck tires, so you can haul like horse trailers or cattle or or, or stuff around. Like, yeah, it's there. They got those big boys for a reason out there. Uh, like these trucks moving around. Like even even in Texas, even down in Brownsville, where where Starship is, it's still it's still like 20, 30 miles to Brownsville from here. It's a long way that away. Anyway, Das, thanks for the raid, man. I guess I, I, you said something, so I guess I gotta make this thing now, huh? That's all right. <clears throat> I ain't worried. You broke down outside of Dumas, Texas. Once upon a time, and had three ranchers stop to help before I could get the hood open. Yeah, that's that's the thing, man. Yeah, they're very nice people out there because they know if you break down, you're screwed. So everybody's super polite and super nice out there. But you, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay. You gotta be, you gotta be nice back to them. Because if they figure out that you're full of hot air, dude, they'll they'll be like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I like listening about the U.S. It's different from Europe, but not everybody understands that. Yeah, Monica, I like telling about it. I think it's really neat. Is this RimWorld? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Monica, you know, that's the thing. That's the other thing. I'm trying to, I try to curb what people say because... What you guys hear about in the news is just the crazy people. You guys hear about the crazy people all the time, but you never, you know, people don't realize that the U.S. has 300 million people in it, man, and, like, the vast majority of those people are really, really nice folks. Like, Americans will give you a shirt on their back if they think you need it. Especially those, those, the folks in the middle of the country. They, they really will. They're really nice folks. But normal people don't make a story now, do they? Like, look, you know, I was in Oklahoma. I'm, dude, the closest person that I know in Oklahoma is a thousand miles away in Detroit. You know, Primo's family was the closest relatives that we have. That doesn't matter. They, you know, they had a truck out for us. They fixed it in one day. And they, you know, they sent us on our way. They showed us exactly where the hotels were. They showed us where we could eat. They're like, they're like, yeah, cool, cool. Uh... You know, they were super nice. The, the the guys at the shop on 28 let me in the shop. They were like, here, look, this thing is shot, that shot, that shot. I'm like, all right, press new fittings and we'll go from there. Yeah, normal people don't sell, indeed. Yes, yes, no, you ain't going to get that in Massachusetts. They'll take you for a ride because they're pieces of crap. Yeah, Florida man sells, yeah. But yeah, Monica, you know, we're we're not all crazy. I'm telling you. We we ain't all crazy. Some of some of some of us mm, yeah. Some of us are a little nutty. A little nuttier than others. But vast majority, I'm saying like at least 70 to 80% of people in this country are pretty dang nice. All right, so let's work on the base plate here. I'm staying far away from California. California Linux is full of awesome people if you get out of the city. Bro, I... So Linux, the truck started having fuel filter and fuel pump problems in Rancho, in Inland Empire. <clears throat> and a viewer quite literally is like, dude, come to my house. 
here's my address, you can use my driveway, you can use it as a base of operations to fix the thing. I dropped the tank on the truck, dropped the fuel tank, not, not like physically dropped it, I pulled it down. I dropped the tank so I could get at the fuel pump, because the fuel pump's inside of the fuel tank, right? Why GBSM? He was out in San Bernardino. He let he's like, dude, come to my house. I got you. No problem. Let he let us spend the night. Like, yeah, so I spent the night in Inland Empire. Like, dude, gotta get out of the city. Here's a lot of hustle and bustle. But once you get out of it, dude, plenty of nice people. Yeah, I I sent them a I sent them a fruit basket. I'm not kidding. It wasn't a fruit basket. It was like jams and stuff. Because him and him and his mother were nice enough to take us in, like save me a very expensive hotel. That would have sucked. I sent him some Stonewall Kitchen, some real New England stuff. Yeah, Monica's is country full of full of pretty pretty dang normal people, but you wouldn't think that if you watch you know news and whatever. But either way. They stacked it last night, Bandit. Too much sand for me out there. I need some snow during the winter to feel good. Live in Big Bear. Snow. Big Bear, dude. Literally right next to here, you go up in the San Bernardino National Forest, it snows. Straight up. I personally hate snow. Dax, sorry the Red Sox didn't win last night. Was really hoping they'd win for you. Hey, it's okay, dude. It's okay. I would not mind Florida weather. It get Ando, if you don't mind humidity, Florida's clutch. See last! What's up, Volk? Two bits of good news for me. One, Jenny's in good spirits today and not going to have any surgeries done. Two, I've been able to 100% confirm that SLS is fully stacked. Yeah, the stacking was last night, Volk, right? Dude, how about how about Jared Isaacman stepping up? What a Chad. What a Chad. Your seats didn't look very obstructive. They were obstructive to the scoreboard deck. But yeah, the Astros played great, man. Hey, it's, you know, I, I'll be honest. And I know this isn't what you should say right now because Herder, it's the other team, right? Uh, but this, this, I, dude, if the Strohs win and they go to the ALCS, I will gladly cheer them on. Absolutely. They're a frigging fantastic team. I like them. I, I don't mind them. I think they're great. I want my Red Sox to win. I'm not going to lie to you, but I do, I do like the Strohs. I wouldn't mind representing the American League. They're, they're a really good team. You know how hard it is to rally in the ninth like that? That's really, really, that's tough to turn it on after freaking four hours of baseball. It's hard. Braves blew it last night, Disciple. They friggin' blew it. I can't believe that. But, once again, that's playoff baseball. If you're gonna get introduced to baseball, just like hockey, now is the time to do it. Anyway. Alright, so, where do we want our orbital launch mount to be here? I'm trying to think how we should set this up. That was a super high fastball. Props to him for it in a three run homer. Go, Braves. Chop on. Hey, man. Beating the Dodgers is going to be difficult. The Dodgers are a good team. Very good. I'm happy that we I can talk baseball with with folks. I usually only talk about baseball with my dad. I hide my power level when it comes to baseball knowledge because let's be real, this lot the the, the kind of people that like this don't generally like baseball. They're slowly closing the arms around the tower pillars. Hey, hey, hey.
Thomas, I see why they did this. It locks, it locks around. What's wrong with rockets and sports? Nothing, you just, with new space Tybot, you generally don't get people that like sports and space flight, you know? And don't, don't sit me, don't sit here and look at me like, well, I like baseball. You know exactly what I'm, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Forgot to tag you, but see last. The Royals can go to two straight World Series straight and win one even. Kansas City, you know what I noticed, Dak? And it's something that I never really noticed until rather recently. Can People in Kansas City like baseball a lot. Like, the like the Royal, the, there are some diehard Royals fans out there. Well, if you make it to France for some weird reason, there will be a couch in a garage. All right, Alex. Merci. <clears throat> Uh, dude, Adam Savage is showing off a Surveyor 3 camera that was retrieved from the moon. It was Surveyor 6, I thought. Wasn't it 6, Bandit? Baseball's tough, man. Tough game. It's a tough game to play. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, like... You know, soccer isn't a tough game to play. Soccer is tough in its own in its own regard. You try running around for 90 minutes. It's hard to do. I'm trying to think how we're going to set up the catcher arm. Hi like, uh, hierarchy is going to be huge here. Because I have to somehow... So this is a 500 foot tall tower, right? And I have to somehow... I mean, these pilings... We know those pilings on this pad... And this is a picture from RGV. We know those pilings go down 30 meters. They go down about 100 feet. I don't know how I'm going to mimic that structural. I don't know how I'm going to mimic that structurally. But uh, I'm sure we'll figure out something. No, I'm... X, Das said... Uh, das was doing the, the NASA Space Flight stream this morning. And he's like, you know who could build this? EJ could build this in KSP. So we could see how it works. I'm like... Oh, frick. I got called out, man. So I got to figure out how to make this. It's even tough to follow for newbies. There's so much nuance to the game. It's not even funny. Yeah, so uh, that's my fun project for the day. I'm just trying to think how we should set the base plate up, dude. You could probably ground anchor the pilings. I hate ground anchors, Prey. They suck. They're terrible. I'd rather make my own foundation. To be a hundred percent honest with you, um, yeah, I know that's strange. Why do ground anchors suck? They move around. They move around just like launch clamps. A wider base plate. I mean, Alex, we're really gonna have to weigh this thing down. I'm gonna need to build something tall, but. I don't know. Maybe I should build the rocket for this first. Bo Jackson. Awesome. Disciple. No, that's Das giving you advertising. You can tell Das it's a long way between the proposal and I do. He said that on stream earlier. I'm thinking that this base plate is wide enough, Alex. What we have to do here is is this. We have to, I'm gonna need to make, I'm gonna need to have a place for the orbital launch mount. I'm thinking tower right here. Uh, this won't be exactly to scale. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. So, 
I'm thinking tower right there. And then... You know, we can do the orbital launch mount. This is just mocking stuff up. We can do the OLM right there. And then... Catch arms can be like somewhere in here. I'm not sure, Pilch. We're gonna have to figure that one out. SRBs would probably be the right way to do it, but getting the SRBs with tracks is difficult. I do think that, Liam's. Mm -hmm. Liam, yeah, I do. What's that, Forge? A well-optimized starship would do about 250 tons to orbit as expendable and, a, and 150 tons fully reusable. What are you talking about, Swagger? I don't know what you mean. What game? Yeah, I'm playing Kerbal right now. Yes and no, Alex. All right, so what kind of diameter here are we talking about for our rocket? If we were gonna do a two scale, hold on. If we're going to scale, uh, Starship is 9 meters, so 9 divided by, uh, or no, 9 times 0.66, oh, no, no. Six meter. Six meter would be two scale, obviously, because, yeah, two thirds of 9 is 6, idiot. What the heck is going on here? Oh, hey, Das. Um, nothing. Nothing. Two thirds scale is Kerbal, Alex. That's right from the developers. Two thirds scale is uh, two thirds is scaled for K KSP. Uh, so the the reason why is because. The average human is 1.5 meters tall. A Kerbal's one meter tall. Their running scale, from the this is from the developers, is about 0.62 or about two thirds of the scale. Uh, do you think counterweights or no? Das, this is what I've been finding, dude. And I don't I don't know if you've been keeping up with the meta at all. What I've been finding is that launch clamps are susceptible to float point, and so are the ground anchors. So my solution to that problem is literally find a flat piece of land, like, you know, the launch pad or whatever, right? And just put the pad out. Yeah, the pad will move around. The, the whole pad will slide around on the plate because of float point errors, right? It'll still do that. However, uh, all the components on it stay relative to each other. So... Think of it like, you know, if you're building in a, in a swamp, you know, that sometimes, you know, it'll shift around a little bit. That's no big deal. You know, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm quickly coming to, uh, the conclusion for it. I, I don't know if, you know, if you ever jump in back into KSP, it's just better to build a base plate for the pad. Like here, check this out. Look, look at the big SSTOs pad. We're, we're working on like a big venture star here. Right. And we built an absolutely massive, I built a massive pad, like it's a thousand parts because it's me. This thing doesn't move around very much because it's so frigging heavy. You know, so 
I find that building base plates like this really does help. You're aiming for an 80 meter tall and 6 meter wide vehicle and a tower about 85 meters tall and 7 meters from the pad. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I'm, I don't think we need counterweights. I can probably... Das, I could probably get it working correctly um, with same vessel collision. Because you can use Kraken Tech, basically, in a same vehicle design nowadays with, with SVI. So we could probably make it work. I just built it to scale that fits in the VAB. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Hmm. An 80 meter tall tower. Uh, damn. That makes sense. So that's not what EJ will do. I think I will on this one, Savvy, to be 100% honest with you. I, I think I'll just make a scale model of it. Uh, like already scaled scale model, you know <laughs> That would probably just be you know a little bit easier uh, Yeah, I don't need to paint it Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale it to paint it What are you working on today Jesse we're gonna see if we can make a proof of let's call it a proof of concept for the catch mechanism I should be able to get this done with cal controllers and action groups basically you start to land the booster you turn the engines on the booster starts slowing down then you'll then you switch you switch to the tower right and you basically switch hit the action group switch back and then land and th that'll bring the arms in and that'll land and then you land in in there that that should do it Mechazilla, his arms wide. Alright, let's take a look. That's right side up. Hang on a minute, guys. Shaka, when the cable snapped, when the crane fell. No, no crane falls, please. Starbase, when the falls fell. <laughs> you think hinges can take the force from such a landing? I trust your skills, but that's pushing the limits in KSP. Yes. Hinges don't take the load, Alex. They transmit the load to the tower. It's pretty obvious by looking at this thing. I mean, if we pull up NSF, like, I've, I've been wondering about this for some time. But if you look, you look at this and you start noticing things. You start noticing that the arms are very, very beefy. And then the carriage for it is not very beefy. It's not... It looks pretty thin. You know why? Because it's not carrying the load. It transmits load to the tower. The tower is what does it. The linear bearings are what... The linear bearings in the carriage just transmit the load being put on by this thing catching a booster. They transmit the load to the tower. That's the key here. So if you do this right, you shouldn't have to put any load on the hinges. You should just transmit the load through the hinges. That's where hybrid Kraken tech could come into play. It's still going to be difficult. It's still going to be hard to do, but I should be able to do it. Also, and thanks, thank NSF and Das. Thank you for you know letting us constantly just peep on the footage all day. I appreciate it, man. So let's do this. All right. 
So I'll just build this for a 3.7. A 3.7 meter rocket and we'll call it a day. If the arms move up and down the tower, you, you, can, you can lower peak loading. Yeah. Yeah, exactly how to rock. Can you use Condor 9? No. I'm going to need a rocket that, uh... I'm going to need a rocket that is specifically has the hangers in the right spot. So go there like this, do that. Yeah, Condor 9 isn't exactly designed to work like this, to work with this endo, but uh, I'm sure I can, we'll get something similar. I mean, a 3.7 meter rocket is really what we need. something that's good enough to demonstrate the point because if I was gonna sit here and build like actual scale super heavy I mean that I'm not gonna say that that would be difficult it would just take a while and I'm on board but we have to we have to make sure that we're not slacking with that SSDO you know hey Sanjay what's going on all right so You're just gonna build Starship and Super Heavy. I think I'm just gonna do a booster catch to mast. I think that would be the right move for now. Hmm. Hey Panther, what's going on? Looks like a fancy bearing. It kinda does, doesn't it? Starting with the booster catch is legit. Yeah. If I can just build some like small scale Kraken hybrid Kraken robotic tech, I guess we should be. Hey, beautiful. It should be okay. Uh, I'm just trying to see how that. Yeah. The OLM is a little bit wider than five meters. Mustache game is on point. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, dude. It's famous people. You know what? Let's, uh... We can make this a little bit wider. Get rid of that. Uh, and get rid of these for a moment. Let's, um... So we'll center around... We'll build around a 
three seven rocket, and then give me give me these pieces right here. We should be able to. <clears throat> it wouldn't be an exact perfect circle, but we could get it close. It'll be good enough to get the point across. And then switch that to local orientation. That's not much more than five meters. OLM should be nine meters wide with a six meter hole in it if we're aiming for two thirds. Okay. You know what? I'll do five meter. It's fine. Hang on. I need... I need to check something. I need an axis orientation arrow. So that's the front of the OLM. If we just revert that to so like if I revert that, okay, cool. So that means, yeah, okay, it goes that way. Sweet. <clears throat> All right, so now let's take uh, the base plate and we'll node attach the base plate to there and then we'll go from there. Alex, let's round down. Let's round down to core diameter of five meters and see where that goes, see where that takes us. And then I'm gonna make the base plate basically act as one piece. We'll go to a five meter base and now I should be able to take these panels and double them over in 6x symmetry multiple times, and that should get us a pretty wide diameter. Watch this, ready? So if you turn it, so if you're just moving something in rotation like this, with not, like not, if you hold, if you move it like this, well, with your hand up in the air, it's moving in 15 degree increments. If you do 6x symmetry, and then you rotate it in 15 degree increments every time, you basically can make a line of uh, panels here, right? And then we rotate it 15 or again, put a panel in, make sure it's in six times symmetry. One piece of prefamulated amulite. Yep. Surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing. Five meter core is five ninths scale, so the vehicle would be 67 meters total, but it would be 44 meters and the tower would be 71. should build this around the booster. That would probably be the right place to start. Stack 67M. All right. Got to paint it. I did have time to build it to scale and paint it. Got him.
should be able to make a perfect circle this way. Now I think that OLM is too... The, the outer diameter is too big. The mustache man, what's up, Sevy? Can you explain how the grid fins work? They're hypersonic control surfaces, but how? They have holes in them. Um, aerodynamics work differently at hypersonic speeds. When the, air, when the air is going faster than the speed of sound, it does different things. So, if I can... Here. Check this out. Air does stuff like this. It, it, it doesn't work exactly the, in the exact same way, but it works like a boat wake, essentially. Long, like, it's aerodynamics, dude, so it's a little bit on the complicated side to explain it correctly. Long story short, air does different things when you get into transonic. Transonic especially. Air does, air does weird things at transonic speed. It, it's, it's strange. When you get into hypersonics, right? Air, air acts very different. Long story short, anything that breaks through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, right? Or supersonic, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really, I mean, hypersonic is, hy the difference between hypersonics and supersonics is, well, they're pretty much the same, except with hypersonic stuff's on fire. Yeah, stuff's on fire. Um, that's, that's a very, very plain Jane way of saying that, but it's, doesn't, doesn't make it not true. Appleton crane parts are out of the shed. Interesting. Interesting, Thomas. Stuff's on fire, yo. Pretty much spinach screen, yeah, exactly. With hypersonics, you're literally ripping air molecules apart because you're compressing them so much. Uh, yeah. If you picture like an like mole different molecules in the atmosphere, right? You know, oxygen, nitrogen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you consider them to, like, picture it as, like, a water balloon, right? And you have, like, a bunch of water balloons, right? Say you have, like, a ball pit of water balloons, right? And you jump in. Well, what's going to happen when you jump into the ball pit of freaking water balloons? The ones that you land on and compress immediately are going to splash, right? And some of them probably won't, right? Hypersonics kind of work like that. You're hitting the atmosphere at such a high rate of speed that the molecules, the air molecules, are compressing against surfaces. They compress, and they com what happens when gases compress per the ideal gas law? They get hot. Very freaking hot in this, in this particular case. At hypersonic speeds, the air molecules compress, and they get so ridiculously hot, they literally rip apart. They ionize. So you're taking, what is it? You're taking electrons out, if I'm remembering right? And the resulting, the resulting for, thing that happens is a lot of heat gets generated, a lot of energy gets generated, because you're literally splitting atoms. Well, not splitting atoms, it's molecules, but yeah, you, I guess you could say it like that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Hey, 12, what's going on? I assume you've seen Destin's vid on... I, I, I actually haven't, Plums. I, I read about aerodynamics. Bring back the Ted Lasso cosplay? Well, I think I am right here. It is molecules. You separate the electrons from the nuclei. Yeah. And the resulting energy that gets released comes in the form of heat, and that comes in the form of plasma. That's why, you know, the space shuttle or a capsule needs a heat shield. It, it, because the heating, the atmospheric heating that happens from molecule compression and ionization generates insane amounts of energy. Uh, and so, Flykin, going back to your hypersonic control surface, if you just have a, a fin, right? You just have a finned control surface. Well, what's going to happen when you turn that fin? You turn that fin at a high rate of speed, right? All that's going to happen is just plasma is going to build up on it, and one side of it's going to get really hot and melt the damn thing, okay? The grid fins, on the other hand, are specifically built in a way to be able to vector that hypersonic flow. Specifically, if you look at the bottom of these things, you see how they're ridged on the bottom? That's a very, 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 very important thing. See how the bottoms, bottoms are concave like that? That's super important. What that is literally doing, because remember, 
I told you that at supersonic and hypersonic speeds, you have a boundary layer. It's called a boundary layer, I think. You have this. What those points on the grid fins do is take that and they vector it into these little the the little squares right there. It's a very important thing to understand that you have a wake at hypersonic and supersonic speeds. You have a huge wake. And that wake is really hard to I mean the, Peter Beck referred to it as a plasma knife. He's right. That's basically what it is. That takes the grid fin takes those little wakes and divvies them up and then shoots them through the squares. Long story short, that's the really, really simplified way of saying it. Uh, aerodynamics is complicated, man. It's really, really complicated. To get something to fly through the air at high speed is hard. That's really difficult stuff to figure out. So it's directing the plasma boundary layer, layer away. It's, it's breaking it. Because... Yeah, for the most part, dude. You have a theta angle. So... All right, if you look at this picture of the T-38s, all right, you see how the air is going this way? You see how the wakes are, there's a, it's like angled, right? It's about, it's almost a 90 degree angle in this picture. You know what that tells me? These T-38s are probably going like a little over Mach 1, something like that. The theta, the angle, which is represented as theta, changes depending on the speed that you're going your wake changes the wake angle it definitely does so that also is very dependent on the shape that's punching through you see how a pointed shape right is going to create a wake a, a wake that's very that has a really high theta right it's it'll it'll create an angle that's very very steep right the shuttle has a blunt nose the blunt nose actually does the opposite of that, which is, this is what I mean about aerodynamics being very weird, okay? The shapes that you think are aerodynamic at high speeds aren't. It's very strange. It's very strange stuff. Check out, look at what the shuttle, look what the shuttle's nose cone does. Weird, right? But then again, the shuttle does go a lot faster, so... It reduces the radius of curvature of the boundary layers so you get hypersonic flow through the fins instead of being pushed around them. Exactly. Long story short, Flykin, the, the points on those grid fins are designed to push this in through the grid fins, allowing you to be able to control something at a very high rate of speed. The grid fins are, dude, that, they're re it's really smart. Yeah. Strange, right? This is what I mean, guys. This is stuff that I'm a, even a little bit sketchy on. I don't... I get what it's doing. I couldn't tell you how it works with math. Uh, this is very, very hard to figure out. This is, like, pray, correct me if I'm wrong here. Doing the differential equations to, to figure this out with math is, will make your brain hurt. Like, hurt. Why does this happen? Atmospheric compression, dude. Why does the Blackbird have a pinpoint nose then? It's not a pinpoint. It's not a pinpoint at all. It just looks like one. That ain't a pinpoint, dude. That ain't a pinpoint. That fuselage look like looks like this. It ain't a pinpoint at all. It just looks like one. But the very tip, that's a pedo sensor. It's a, that's for airspeed right there. It's to measure the incoming airspeed so the pilots can know how fast they're going. It's called a pedo sensor. That's what that antenna looking thing is. But the part that's actually doing stuff is right here. And you, if you notice, that's not, it's a very kind of blunt shape. Doing CFD by hand would certainly make one's brain hurt. Mm -hmm. Hand calculations are all estimates. You have to make assumptions. CFD is the only way to get close. Yeah, but that also moves the shot cone forward to help a bit, though. Tessa, honestly, with an antenna that small, it's not making that much of a difference. I can, I don't, I'm not an expert on this, but I know enough to tell you that that's not doing anything. It's there to get laminar flow. 
into the pitot sensor so you can get a good indicator of how fast you're going. That's why it's that's why it's stretched off the front and why the pitot sensor isn't right here. They don't want any turbulent air going into the pitot sensor. Because if you have turbulent air going into the pitot sensor on a plane, your indicated airspeed is going to be false. So, fellas, check check this out. The uh, planes like the SR-71, the XB-70, their fuselage is designed to vector that boundary layer in a certain direction, okay? Check this out. Look at this picture of the SR-71. You can start figuring stuff out, all right? So, the first thing that's kind of plainly obvious here, look, see how it's kind of wet right there? The heck's that about? It's wet? Why is it wet? And why isn't that like dried off? Two things, high pressure to low pressure creates condensation, right? What happens on the top of a wing? You get condensation, right? Because you have air that's coming in, it gets compressed against the surface and then it decompresses really quick. So you get water accumulating up here, okay? It tells you that the SR-71 makes a lot of drag right in this area here. That's a really easy, really easy thing to spot. Wait, sorry, why would you want a pointy nose in hypersonic flight and have a... You wouldn't want a pointy nose in hypersonic flight. You guys gotta remember, the SR-71 does not go hypersonic, it goes supersonic. This thing does not go faster than Mach 5. Well, it might. I bet you it could. You'd probably start damaging things. Uh, nose cone design efficient. Yeah, there you go, floating. Nothing is better than a wind tunnel. CFD means nothing unless it's backed or it's backing or backed by experimental data. Yep, yep. False. That's just liquid chemtrails. Also, if you want to get into something interesting with the SR-71, the engine cones move. Yep. They retract the engine nozzles to be able to get the boundary layer into the engine. Yeah. You want, You guys want to start getting into some crazy stuff? SR-7, the SR-71's nose cones, first of all, couple of things. Here, I'll tell you, here's a couple more things, all right? You see, that's a weird edge right there, right? you never seen a plane with a nose cone like that. Like I said, it, it's like a, a circle with points on the sides, right? Well, that you can tell a couple of things from this, okay? So the first thing that I can tell you is that look at the angle. So the SR-71's fuselage is designed to take that boundary layer that I'm telling you about and put it into the engine. Smart, very smart. The next thing that I can show you is that that nose cone actually splits the nose cone, the pointed intake on the SR-71's engines on these J-58s are designed to retract. They actually move forward and back on the vehicle's longitudinal axis, on its long axis. They move forward and back. Why? I explained why that happens. Why does the SR-71's nose cones move back and forth? Because the theta angle changes at speed. Your wake always isn't going to be vectored directly into the engines. So they move the engines to account for the, for the shift in the wake. It's very, very smart. Kelly Johnson designed and the Skunk Works designed this plane with no computers. They did this with blueprints and math. Okay, couple of other things. See that sucker right there? What's that designed to do? That's a big deal right there. That's designed to do the same thing. It's designed to push air out over this wing. And a hypersonic tunnel. Yeah, that too, but still, it's still pretty ridiculous. Yeah, the SR-71's nose and design is, is made like this for a very good reason. It's designed to basically take that wake and use it to its advantage. Instead of, instead of just being like, oh, okay. It's the same kind of concept uh, like as the XB-70, if you guys want to check out another cool plane. I know we're kind of on a little bit of a here, but the XB-70 is a very interesting design. 
if you look at the XB70, right? You look at it, you're like, wow, that's it's kind of strange. It's kind of a strange looking plane. Last message before Voyager sees. Okay. Why do fighter jets have pointy noses, but the shuttle has a blunt nose? Hypersonics versus supersonics. If you look at it, it's very strange looking. And then, uh, you know, the wings, the wings on the XB-70 fold down on the outsides, like an, like an X-wing or something. Lock S foils in attack position. So the XB-70 is try. it takes, takes advantage of it. it. Instead of like the SR-71 vectoring that into the engines, the XB-70 pushes that compression, it pushes that boundary layer underneath the wing, causing compression lift. So long story short, when the XB-70 is up at high altitude, right? It has a really low wing surface area, but the boundary layer that's made from the intakes right here, right? Shoots off to the side. It shoots underneath the wing and gets compressed up against those downward folding wings like a trimaran in the water. There's a reason why trimarans exist. What they do is they push water between the center hull and the outer pontoons, and that water is incompressible, so it raises the ship out of the water at speed. So you get less hydrodynamic drag. This thing does the same thing with air. Now, air is compressible and water is not, so you need to be going pretty damn fast to get to, to to reap the benefits of compression lift. That's why they put six engines in the back of this thing. The XB-70 basically can fly at an extremely high altitude and instead of the engines kind of being used to keep the plane, to keep the plane flying, the engines can be used for going fast, long story short, because the compression lift can keep this plane up here. You're basically getting the lift benefits and qualities of a plane that has a wing that's like three or four times the size, right? With this. Yeah, you just need more than 50 rings for hypersonics. What's that, Thomas? Yeah, the SR-71's engines are a work of art. J-58s are insane. Yeah, see? See the angle? The angle changes. It retracts. See that? Look at that. It retracts at higher speed to vector that air into the engine. That's why the SR-71 can go so ridiculously fast. Vectoring that boundary layer in, and then that goes through a compressor, right? It goes through a compressor in the front, and then they light it on fire, and it bypasses the engine, and then it goes out the back. At higher speeds, guys, they shut they shut the uh, they shut the engine off for the most part. It's turbo ramjet. Yeah, they shut the engine off. You don't need the engine at high speed. In fact, the engine is not going to do anything at high speed. The reason why, and this is another thing with aerodynamics, and this is kind of like. One of those, well, no crap, EJ, moments. But if you if you think about it here for a moment, right? What does an engine do? All, it, all a, a jet engine does is accelerate the air. The air going in is accelerated faster, and then the air coming out, it's accelerated, and the air coming out is going faster than the air going in. So you, you accelerate forward. Pretty straightforward stuff. What happens when the airspeed of the, the incoming airspeed from the engine is faster than the outgoing airspeed? Well, the easy way to say that is stuff starts breaking. Yeah, stuff starts to not work correctly. If the airspeed going into a jet engine is going faster than the speed of sound, jet engine doesn't work very well. The jet engine basically turns into an air brake. It, it turns into a giant brake and it starts overheating. Yeah, because air is what keeps the combustor, intake air is what keeps the combustors cool on a jet engine. Fun fact. So if it doesn't get the air that it needs because the air is just going like right through it, 
uh, yeah, it, it, it'll overheat pretty badly, actually. So, on a fighter jet, how do they solve that problem? Well, they have an intake, and the air intake is designed to create drag to slow down the air to subsonic speeds and then feed it into the engine. That's what they do. On the J-58, on the SR-71, yeah, once you get past, like, the, the intake already does that, but once you get past a certain speed, you get the same problem. When you're moving into, like, high supersonics, so, like, Mach 3, Mach 4, shut the engine off. It's not doing anything. Also, this is kind of cool. The same idea. Uh, ground effect is different. That's a cool video, though. Ground effect is a, is a different thing. Oh, nice picture from RGV. I'm going to bring that picture up, and we'll get back to working on the chopsticks. When the Blackbird took to the sky, the airframe started leaking, leaving a trail of jet fuel on the tarba tarmac. While many were concerned that this would render the plane useless, the Blackbird was designed to eject its specialized fuel. The leakage was attributed to the SR-71's lack of a fuel bladder. Well, Billy, what they did with the SR-71 is they designed it to work up there. They didn't design it to work down here. What happens is, is you get all that heating going at high speed and the fuel tanks actually seal. Yeah. So the thing was kind of like a rag doll down here, so to speak. It didn't fly very well at low, at low atmosphere, very low atmosphere, very fuel inefficient because you're throwing fuel overboard. What they came up with is basically the, you know, the SR-71 is going to go so fast, it's going to create heating via gas compression, like what we were talking about. That heating overall heats up the entire airframe. And when it heats up, the, when the metal heats up, it expands and seals the tanks. Wait, no engine? How does the plane go forward at Mach yes then? Well, Swishio, here, I'll draw it, I'll draw it simpler. So the SR-71 engine has that pointed intake, right? And then you have like this back here, and then you have the the exhaust the exhausty boy part, and then you have your bypass doors like that. So the engine is right here. This is the jet engine, right? You know, the J fifty eight is the jet engine is right here. Now, up at the front, dude, they have something like this. So, it's basically this. Actually, you really want to reduce it to its base element? It's a Venturi. It looks like that. It's an hourglass. It's a Venturi. And anybody watch Destin's Smarter Every Day video? Anyone? My last describes it. Hey, MGB. 37 month resub. Yay for experimental builds. Call the ramjet. It uses the intake to compress the air to low speed, high pressure, and then fuel is mixed and combusted. The engine is still very much working, but no moving parts. Yep, the J58 Swishio is made up of two things. So you have your regular jet engine part. And then you have the ram air part. And it's called a ramjet, like what Rocket Guy's saying. This is a very simplified design, guys. It's a little more complicated than this. Long story short, there's a Venturi in here. There's a Venturi in here with a fuel injector. And an igniter. At a high rate of speed, the intake retracts, and it takes that boundary layer that I was telling you guys about, and the boundary layer actually has a theta that goes it goes right into the intake. So that that layer is very, it, dude, the wake, there's a lot of air in there. <laughs> in a boundary, in, in the wake, there's there's a lot, it's, a very, it's high pressure, it's very high pressure. So they take that, and that gets shot in here, and then they compress it a little bit more, and then they spray it with fuel, and then they light it on fire. 
and that actually goes out and it bypasses around the turbine machinery of the engine and gets shot out the back. This is what it does at higher speed, switch you. At lower speed, the intake actually goes forward. This thing goes forward, right? And air is allowed to go in, laminar flow air is allowed to go in, right? And it gets, um, it gets compressed so it slows down to subsonic speeds and then instead of going through the bypass it goes through here it goes through the jet engine and the jet engine does its thing out the back but that's only at low speeds in many cases you don't even need to light it the air is superheated yep here here's the drawing for it that's the technical drawing i just wanted to show that i know it i'm not just going to look at the picture and be like oh yeah that's what it does i know exactly what it's doing i understand it pretty it's it's not too incredibly complicated to explain. It's not too incredibly complicated to explain. It's complicated to do. Rocket science is easy. Seriously, it's not that hard to it's not that hard to communicate what it does. Believe me, that's what I do. It's hard to do it. Yeah, very difficult to actually go and do it. Yeah, that's the hard part. I just finished watching Oh, nice, John. There you go. Yeah, so Swizio, at lower speed, the jet engine, the, the, the spinny thing, the, the, the turbine and the compressors are actually doing their thing. It's just jet engine, regular jet engine stuff, right? And the bypass is still working to an extent. Once you start getting past, once you start getting into the higher end, this thing, the, the, the spinny boy, shuts off. But the engine is still working over here. And it's working basically with that Venturi, like what I'm telling you about. It's just, dude, it's just a Venturi. It does exactly what a carburetor does. Only at Mach 3. It's the same thing. Because when you get air coming in at that high, at, at, at very high compression like that, per Destin's video, what happens? The fuel atomizes right into it. And Rocket Guy's right, because it's superheated. It just, it atomizes immediately and lights on fire, kind of like a rocket engine. pretty crazy and Swizio they had this Kelly Johnson and the guys at Lockheed had this stuff figured out in the late 50s kind of like a diesel engine endo it's not hydraulic compression so it kind of is but it also kind of isn't yeah the whiplashes in KSP are our SR-71 engines, just for, for what it's worth. Yep. Just, just Venturi, dude. It's not just a Venturi. That's the very simplified way of saying it, but you see it right there. See the hourglass? It's easy to spot right here. See how the intake gets really, really tight right there, and then it gets really low, and then it gets really tight again. It is quite literally... Quite literally, of just a big Venturi. That's it. Can you imagine these one of these things being built with modern material and knowledge? I mean, Tesla. Yeah, I don't think you can build it better than this. They they spared no expense with that program. Also, the new Mustangs. <laughs> nice. If I had to take an educated guess, what sort of thing do you reckon they're working on right now over at the Skunk Works that we won't know about for a few decades? <sighs> Early space news today? Nah, I want to get back into building uh, in KSP. Um, if I had to guess... Style. And don't get me wrong, I, I, there's nothing I don't know that you guys don't know. Like, it's not like I know any privileged information, nor would I want to, all right? Um, if I had to guess, they're probably using neural net. They're probably using neural nets to rapidly prototype stuff. 
if I had to guess, um, yeah, they're they're probably using some type of supercomputer to to prototype to do like rapid prototyping of aerodynamic designs. If I had to guess, and I know that, like, what do you mean? Okay, so that's not an SR-71, what does that mean? No, you can refine it and make an extremely potent design if you can rapidly prototype sp stuff with relatively accurate CFD. Kerbal is a very primitive way of doing that. Um, if I had to guess, they're probably working with hypersonics. Hypersonics, for whatever reason, is kind of the new defense meta so instead of like a ballistic missile, so like an ICBM, the rocket goes up, it separates the payload, and the payload is on a ballistic trajectory. You basically fire and forget, right? Hypersonics, you can steer those. You can steer those at like Mach 6. Like the grid fins, for instance, on Falcon 9. Stuff like that. Only stuff that's capable of like stable flight. So probably something kind of like the SR-71, but unmanned... Uh, Unmanned, unmanned hypersonic drones, like kind of like the D twenty one. That's my guess, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know for sure. So literally this, the SR-72, yeah, hypersonic UAVs, yeah, it's probably something similar to the D-21. The U.S. experimented with this stuff in the 70s by making the D-21. So the D-21 is a supersonic reconnaissance drone. It's basically one SR-71 engine. It's, just, it's one J-58, and that's it. Uh, and it was actually carried on the Blackbird. Yeah. And the Blackbird would deploy the D-21. Relax, Primo. Please. Yeah. The U.S. experimented with this in the 60s. In the, well, 60s and into the 70s. And it, into the 70s, it didn't really work. Uh, the tech just wasn't there to make an unmanned supersonic drone like that. But they did mess with it. Alright, anyway. Did you ever talk about that mock-up that one idiot filmed on the semi-truck kind of looked like SR-72? No. Uh, Tron, I try to steer away from that stuff. Now the tech exists. Yeah, I'll bet you because they can do such rapid prototyping, guys, that they've probably figured out some new innovations. That's just a guess, though. I don't know for sure. Doesn't that single engine drone have torque issues? Well, uh, jet engines often have low moment J speed. They have low. Mo they have a very low moment of inertia, so you don't need to necessarily worry about too much rotational torque. It's not a propeller engine. The reason the reason the propeller planes do this, if you know, if you over torque the motor, they'll flip, right? The reason why that happens is because the prop has such a huge it's such a huge lever arm. It has a lot of moment. That's why propeller that's the other reason why propeller planes make a lot of noise comparatively to jets. I'm trying to think here. What, uh, how are we going to do this? All right, let's just, you know, let's get rid of that and let's just kind of, let's just kind of get going.
gonna work. Actually, I think that might be a little bit too high. Let's do that, and then we'll raise this up a little ways. So what part are we building? Uh, the pad, the orbital launch mount right now. Yeah, we'll just leave that like that. It looks like a milk stool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's some cool things for space news from the lift last night. Novus, I saw it. Oh, dude. It, it's stacked from what I understand. But yeah. Dude, I have that image just parked right here on the desktop, dude, because. I, dude, we gotta see. Some, they got. They gotta show some pictures. You can't leave us in the dark like this. Oh, dude, I'm so hype about that. That just makes me so happy. Eight X sim might give us the radius that we're looking for. No, not really. All right, let's go back to. Six times symmetry. Let's see if that gets us what we want. Yeah, Hell Hydra, as soon as we get something, yeah, let me know. Out if it's made it already the joins aren't too complicated it's the integration of any subsystems and checking them that's time consuming yeah for sure yeah you got to make sure that it's right yeah that'll work just fine You know what, let's see if we can move them in just one tick. That won't mess it up too much, will it? Yeah, okay, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm okay with this. Let's see if we can just move it up one. Yeah. Actually, down, down would probably be better. So get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. That's good. One of the D-21 test flights had a fatal accident involving the D-21 D drone in the mothership called the MD-21. Yeah, they canceled it. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, but I wouldn't doubt if it's... Okay, I already got that. I think it's possible they can roll it out by the end of the month. Yeah, maybe. All right, so
Disco party! I gotta try something different, man. That's gonna be a hard, hard to look at. I highly doubt this is gonna be the right size, but it might get close. Worth it to test it, so we're not gonna just hurt our eyes the entire time. Let's see if this does anything. I don't think equilateral triangles line up here with this math, but yeah, let's check. It's close, and you have way less Z fighting, but um, wouldn't be KSB without a little bit of Z fighting, always. You know it, man. Yeah. All right. We'll just go with the uh, we'll go with the squares, and we'll figure out figure out a way around it. That's how we can do this. I'll just, we'll keep these ones node attached and we'll keep the other ones absolute. Node attached and then absolute snapped. It should create a little, it's gonna create a little bit of overlap, just a teeny weeny bit, but at least it won't destroy your eyes when you try to look at it. Tech gifted five subs. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's annoying to see the slight overlaps then, but it'll work, dude. It'll be fine. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. So what does this bit do? This is the orbital launch mount. Basically, this is what the rocket sits on before it launches, Bree. Uh, no, wrong orbital launch mount. It's this thing. See that thing right there? I gotta kind of figure out the locations for things first. So we gotta figure out the relationship between this and the tower, and then make make this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I because uh, then I need to figure out how long the, the arms need to be. Because if we're gonna make the arms, you gotta figure out you gotta figure out the relationship between those two objects, which is why I started with them. Attach, flaby, and here. In duty.
for structure. And normally I would take the time to like really fine tune and place these struts, but this is supposed to be a quick build, so we'll get going. Just kind of bust it out. Good enough. I'm just closing out all the fuel tanks. This is just a good habit to be in because these aren't fuel tanks. I'm using them as base plates of pre-famulated amulite. Sorry, this was attached in radial symmetry, which means it's only going to use radial symmetry unless I reattach it in mirror sim. Very important thing to understand. Don't attach stuff in radial if you don't intend it to be used, intend it to use radial symmetry. Or else, um, yeah, it's not going to. Radial symmetry overrides mirror symmetry because the Kerbal developers originally made the VAB first before the SPH. Fun fact, see? See how it forced radial right there? Even if I try to switch it, yeah, see? Go back to mirror, it doesn't work. Gotta be careful. Yep, gotta remake that. Didn't work. Total fabrication, we made it up. I gotta redo this. This needs to be this needs to be made better. Um, what would be the better way to do this? Total fabrication. We made it up. We made it up. All right. Um, a better way to do this would be have both of the to have both of these going off the hierarchy this way. Trust me, this is just kind of small stuff here, but this is small stuff that's going to make it a lot easier for us in the long run. Uh, th the real easy way to explain why I did what I just did is that uh, think of it like taking an extra step to make sure that the concrete for the pad cures correctly. Uh, basically, th these tanks need to be placed in a certain way. And if you place them in a certain way, they, they end up being a lot stronger. Um, yeah, that's the right way to say that. All right, watch. Did you see Stationeers has had an update? Yeah, they update that all the time. I usually get an alert when that happens, Jim. B 
basically that radial symmetry thing. I'm not sure what I attached in radial symmetry or how uh, or when I did it. So I'm basically just going to remake it so it's right. Yeah, it, that's very important to get it correct or else, yeah, the pad's not going to work. The pad will blow up if I try to attach something to it. building. I wanted to take a crack at building a uh, orbital launch mount. So starship. Starship stuff, dude. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm messing with here. Little change of pace that I thought people would enjoy. Fastening structure. Where is it picking up radial? Why? I think it's these. I think it's those. I think it's picking up radial off of those. Again. There. Didn't do it that time. Yeah, this is a little mini Boca Chica build. Is that what that is? That is that little is that, is that what that means? Little pequeño. Yeah, I think uh, I was actually coming in contact with this radial symmetry on these for a second. And uh, yeah, that was forcing radial. There. Good enough. It's false. We made it up. Total fabrication. It's false. False. We made it up. Total fabrication. It's false. It doesn't exist. This one was made by a writer. It's false. We made it up. <laughs> I know the video. And I'm, I'm referencing it, dude. It's false. That one's a lie. It's a different video. Oh Jesus! No, no, I'm good. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Uh, 
All right, so there's our launch mount. It's not the prettiest, I guess, but uh, you know, it'll work. That's good. I mean, it's it's not exact, but it's close enough. Great picture, by the way. I mean, my supports the supports are a little a little bit thick, you know, a little thick for that. But hey, it, it, people people will get the point, I think. All right, so how are we gonna do this? The tower. Which leg is the base attached to? The legs aren't attached to the base at all. Um, they're actually not attached to the base at all. The, the base plate is attached directly to the pad plate. Hierarchy. And these are just kind of... They're there for additional support. For the most part. It's false. It's a false, it's a false base plate. We made it up. It's false. I see. I'll never understand how you manage to offset stuff that far. Hold left shift. Yeah, holding left shift will fix that problem. Okay, now the tower. We need to make that. Okay. Can you use those legs to make the tower? Seems a good size. Yeah. For the most part, I think we should. Uh, it's false. We made it up. <laughs> Negative. All right. So, what would be a good base piece for the tower? How about we make we use? So, what what is this one? It's a T fifty. Let's use a T thirty seven tube. A T thirty seven internet to make this work. All right, so here we go. It's false. We made it up. So EJ, about that game last night, anybody that's, anybody that expected the, Do uh, not the Dodgers, the Astros to roll over and die, really has no idea how baseball works, Duber. Yeah, it sucked. I was not happy. Um, we got hosed by a couple of calls, dude. But so did the Astros. So, it's baseball. Deal with it. On to the next game. Not fun. Not happy. Not happy with that result, but hey, it is what it is. Are you planning on being able to launch from this? Maybe. False. We made it up total fabrication. I'm going to use we're going to use boosters. Do they deflate the ball in baseball? <laughs> He's so clever. I was enjoying watching it with my dad. He is waiting to get out of the hospital, but it was getting too late. Baseball games are long, man. Baseball's... It's a chess game, dude. Takes time. False. We made it up. This one is a fabrication. I should do... I should point-to-point point measure this thing, but... No crying in baseball, indeed.
Yeah. It's about as wide as this, so. That means the tower is going to be something like. Oh, crap. The tower is going to be friggin' huge. Even with this quote unquote small scale. Okay. Sorry, this is just kind of a little bit of tedium here. Let's get this done. You've been to this new job for a month now. So many cool things I wish I could tell you and show you, but I'm not sure of the regs. Don't don't risk it. Don't risk it, dude. I, I'm not I'm not worth it. Don't do that. Trust me. Just don't do that. False. <laughs> we made it up. It's a total fabrication. Alright, so the orbital launch mount or the orbital launch tower or the launch tower, Megazilla, is about one orbital launch mount length away so like if I took one of these and put them right here it's a it's actually a little bit under so somewhere like right here yeah a little bit under one so like if I took another donut and we put it right here actually it's yeah it's about it's about that hey Nazalik what's going on Oh my gosh, I'm done with Twitter for the day. What is this? <laughs> New Blue Origin job postings. Blue Origin is looking to hire a variety of roles on its orbital destination team, specifically to build a flight unit under NASA's commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations program, we are building the next space station. Hmm. Pretty hot in these rhinos. Yeah. I'm just, for Kerbal's sake, I am just going to move this five meters away. Yeah, for Kerbal's sake. That'll be fine. Right there. False. Yeah, that, that'll be good. Okay. Oh, for Jeb's sake. Blue's building a lot. You've never seen any of it, though. Yep. I know, dudes. Uh, 
It'll show you when the time is right, dudes. Perfect. Holy, oh, I'm looking at some blue stuff right now. Well, aren't you special, you jerk? Sit there and oh, I'm looking at blue stuff right now. Not tell us. trying to get the concrete filled portion that's right above my noodle right here. I'm trying to get that figured out. Oh, somebody named Spam Risk is calling me. Okay, I will decline that. Yeah, I know. That guy's such a jerk. Who the hell is Spam Risk? Must be like Spanish or something. Must be like a Spanish name. Spam risk. No, if it was no, 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 can't be that. Can't be that. It's a lie. It's a total fabrication. It would be like spam riscos. That's Greek. Would, no, if it was Greek, wouldn't it be like Spam Riscopolis or something? Spam Riscopolis. Spam Riscopolopolopolis. Ham and jam and spam a lot. We're knights of the round table. So many times the given rhymes. We are the knights of Camelot. We drink ham and spam and spam a lot. What are you building? It sort of looks like a table and seed. Uh, Anthony, this. I make uh, this. Yeah, I'm trying to build the catch tower, man. SpaceX today put the uh, the the catcher arms. They put the catcher arms on the on the launch pad. See that? Uh, that's the, that's the thing that supposedly is gonna catch a uh, booster when it comes down to land. And the guys over on the NSF stream were like, my buddy Das was like, hey, I know this guy that might be able to make it in KSP. And I, uh, yeah, I got a little call. I got called out. I got called doubt. They installed the chopsticks this morning. T 
Did you say catch? This is a render by Eric X on Twitter. Check this out. That's what SpaceX wants to do. Building this, do that in KSP with no automation. Um, 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 yeah. Did I stutter? Yeah, boy. I'll, dude, I can, uh, I should be able to do this. Shouldn't be an issue. I can land, I land, I've landed two Falcon Heavy boosters at once in, in KSP, controlling both of them on the way down with no mods. You switch to one, so you have two boosters that are coming down next to each other. All right, Falcon Heavy boosters. Turn the engine on. Switch to the other booster. Turn the engine on. Throttle the booster back on this one. Wait a second. Throttle the booster back on this one, so they're now slowing at the same descent rate because you staggered the ignition. Switch to the left one. Deploy the legs. Switch to the right one. Deploy the legs. The legs deploy. Switch to the left one. Land it. Switch to the, switch to the right one because now it's right behind it. Land it. I've done it. I can do that. That's no problem. Hey, Elro. After about two dozen attempts, boss. Yeah, shut, you know what, Tesla? Shut up. It's doable. How does that... Uh, how does that... Don't try to take me down a peg or two. First of all, let's see you do it. You can't. Second of all, how does that... How does that kind of... How does that help say, proving the point that I could control the tower... You start to land the booster, you switch over to the tower, you hit the action group, it closes the catcher arms, and then you land the booster on the landed catcher arms. Once you land the booster on the catcher arms, you switch back to the tower, you lower it down. Simple. Simple. Don't try to take me down a peg or two. That was hard to do. Jerk. Think you're better than me? Nobody's better than me! Hey man, that was my daughter's pediatrician! Oh god, I can't feel my legs! Can you set a long cal program, set it in switch? If it's out of fizz range, Scary, I don't think cal controllers work. We'd have to test it though. But as long as I get within 200 meters, switch to the tower, close the arms, switch back to the booster, and like, don't, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna do this on the first try, but it can be done. Oh, it, it can be done. Damn, that thing is just a little bit too short. <sighs> yeah, you guys hear the leaf blower. I mean, the leaf blower is fine now because they have to, like, it's autumn, so that's, that's okay. But holy crap, is it annoying. I just still don't get how that comes through onto the stream so clearly. When I'm on the third floor of an apartment building, those guys are, are 30 feet that way. Like, how do you hear? It's like they're outside. Like, I don't get it. How, how loud is that? Like, the intake on that leaf blower, or the exhaust on that leaf blower must be pointed up or something. Go tell that person to stop. You'll be done in five minutes. Leave them alone. Go tell that person to stop. Why are they using a leaf blower indoors? Uh. What? Why? They're.
Serious, why? Oh, serious, why are you like this? That one needs to be right there, which means this one needs to go up just a little bit. And then that means this one needs to go down so these are spaced correctly. They're not the right length. Damn. Because um, if I go to attach another one of these suckers up here, I don't think our spacing is going to be right. Holy crap, I got it right on the first try. Oh, okay. Well then. How many parts are we at? 349? Okay. Okay. Okay, all right, okay. We're using the shorter SRBs? I gotta mimic how this is made structurally somehow, dude. How many segments is this thing supposed to be? Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, oh crap. Okay. Uh, One, two, three, four. Oh, frick. So we have the concrete section, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you have the eighth, the top segment here. What was the name of that experimental he helo you think you heard in Cali? It's an SB1 Defiant. Wow, I can count one segment, two segment, three segment, ah, 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 ah. I'm gonna count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the eighth, eighth segment. So we are at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we gotta do one more. Hey Frank, what's going on? Been slowly filling in the slump land for land reclamation, boss. Thank you. Uh, okay. Are the catwalks around the poles temporary? Yes. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to need another 37 structural. That's a lot of parts. It's gotta be strong, fellas. Like, I don't know what to tell you. It's gotta be, it has to be strong like this. I, I'm not sure how we can do it any other way. And this looks, this looks a lot like it, which is actually kind of rad. Kind of makes me happy. This is the mount for the trolley, uh, for the move, the mount for the trolley carriage. The hydraulics will go in here. Hey, Mili Nisa, what's up? Working Kraken Tech Elevator or Riot? I mean, I, I can, I can, I can do that. I mean, it's going to be like 6,000 parts when we're done, man. No, that's another thing that I'm kind of into is using grandparent strut. Oh, it's disabled. Lovely. That's great. I use the grandparent strut on certain pieces to basically create a lattice of struts. Like, I don't know how many dang auto struts are going through this thing, but... Let me turn on auto struts that like once again this when you get to building to this scale and Daz, I know you know from the Thunderbird from the Thunderbird when you get to building at this scale it has to be strong you, it, you really can't afford to not make the damn thing strong. Yeah that's uh for all intents and purposes is representing all the nuts and bolts that hold that mechazilla tower together this will make it so the tower is not really susceptible to bending too much The only parts where they'll really be susceptible to bending is between the SRBs, but I might be able, I can solve that problem too. All right, 12. Good luck, man. I for, and of course, like a putz, I forgot to freaking put grandparent on some of these things. Uh, so like yeah this thing's 700 parts and that kind of sucks but uh that's 700 parts is carrying probably 2100 auto struts i'd say so yeah this is like the equivalent of having 2100 struts 2100 parts worth of struts on here for a third of the cost and the performance this is the kind of stuff this is the kind of stuff i had to i i do you've you've Basically use the auto struts and regular struts to your advantage. This thing shouldn't sway. It really shouldn't. Porpoises. Yeah, porpoises. Yeah, not purpose. No, 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 not purposes. Alright. So what do they do there? They have instead of a 45, it's like 60 teed off. That's okay, that should be pretty pretty straightforward stuff. Intents and porpoises, guys, that's where it matters. Hmm. How are we going to do this? This has to be done in mirror.
Discovery, go at throttle up. It's close enough. Hey, Metroid. Four years time. Four years time passes way too fast. Yeah. You ain't kidding, man. A lot of this stuff, if we were really going to do this for like mission mode or something, guys, I would really take the time to get the scale and everything accurate, but I'm eyeballing most of this. What I'm trying to tell you is, please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Probably use more SRBs to lower the part count, but uh, but at least we know this won't be going anywhere. What is this? A mechazilla for ants? strut work especially right there that part needs to be strong <laughs> how many parts oh 795. That's great. Okay. Let's let's put her out and see what happens. Oh, no control. Uh, not that that really matters at all. But uh I'll just put that down there. It's, it's fine. You know what? It's engineering mode. I'm just going to put an RTG on it. That way we never run out of fuel. Or electricity. Electricity. To see, to see. Are you going to try and catch the booster? I'm just going to build the mechanism, Danny. I don't know if it'll be able to catch. Oh, jeez, Smirks. Would be nice if there were cables in the game. Yeah. <laughs> John, that'd be funny. I went and reached for the joystick and it wasn't there.
Get down. It looks like a bunch of connects. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen to the real one, huh? Hopefully that doesn't happen to the real one. That would be very unfortunate. <sighs> All right, so this tower looks great. It does sag. And my guess is if we visualize the auto struts. Yeah. There, yeah, see, you got a lattice, you got a mess of auto struts here, but there's not so much in these areas, and that's what's, that's what's making it sag. Okay. A little bit of a weird thing with the hierarchy there that I didn't see. Stuff like this happens, it's just how you, it's all about how you place the parts. Yeah, yeah, Metroid, for sure. Alright, let me get a thumper booster out here. I need to see the collision box on it. The reason why I enabled same vessel collision there and caused it caused an induced explosion is because think how this go how this goes together we can't use thumpers I don't think let me look at the collider box again oh uh, yeah yeah you, yeah you can that took me like two minutes to make so let's just zip do you need a grandparent every other strut or is it just one side? Well, that hierarchy wasn't working. I noticed that the tower was sagging anyway, so it's not... Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Forget that design. That design sucks anyway. much more complicated. Hold on a second. All right, let me just copy this and we'll just put that over there for safekeeping so we have the original design for the segments. Now, a couple of things that I noticed. These are tracks. They're basically train tracks. It's three. It's a three rail train track, but that goes vertical, right? For the catch arms. There can't be many interruptions in this. This needs to work it, and it needs to hold the thing in place. That's very important. And it needs to be able to transmit load as well. That's, that's gonna be hard to do. It's gonna be hard to do in KSP. I, SRBs are very strong, but they're not, they're not the strongest. And either way, I need same vessel collision on them. If I don't have same vessel collision, I can't have two SRBs near each other and have SVI on and make it seamless. You'll have a basically a bump in the rails. The same noise that makes the clickety-clack when a train goes down railroad tracks. So, six rails, two per tower leg, 180 degrees apart. How are we gonna do that, Doss, without screwing the part count, dude? Like seriously, even if I took away all of the all the ribbing for this stuff, 
Hey, Neopod, even if I took away all the ribbing for it, dude, it's still... It's... I mean, that... Like, what am I gonna do? Run I-beams up the side? I mean, I could. Yeah, we could... We could do that for the skates. Does it need to be hollow, or can we use the big SRVs as cross-bracing inside of the tower? The auto struts take care of the cross-bracing, Smirk. Smirks, yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Instead of the SRVs, you use four fairings. Tessa, that might be what we need to do. It's a, yeah, well, hang on a second. Okay. All right. I think I got it. Here's what we're going to do. Ready? Remove that from symmetry. Get rid of the other ones. Okay? Now, this thing right here. How are we going to fix this? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? That can be the backbone. And then the fairings could be strutted there. Okay. All right, I think I got something. Well, Das, we, dude, there's a new, there's, SRBs are probably the right move. I think I got an idea, I think. Here, let's uh, get this and put this sucker in mirror symmetry. Right? Um, I gotta move this segment like this and then use absolute to get it into the right position. And I know it, it, it screwed up the mirror sim axis right there. All I gotta do is go to local orientation and it'll snap back into place. So let me just go here like this, rotate it down, get rid of the one that's not in symmetry, right? And then go like that. Okay. Now, I'm gonna need to do the same for these ones down here. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna go into mirror sim, Rotate this 45 degrees. Make sure that we're centered. Check it against the first one. Okay. Now use local orientation to snap this back into position. And now rotate it out of position for a second. Get rid of the one that's not in symmetry and go like that. Still with me? We're gonna do the same thing again up here. Rotating this and snapping it to absolute ensures that each one of these is perfectly lined up. That'll ensure that our auto struts are nice and uniform. And remember the spacing that I got between segments? We gotta make sure that that's right as well. So, going back over here, the reason why I have to rotate it and then unrotate it and then rotate it again and then is because mirror symmetry goes over root part orientation and the root part of this subassembly is the structural the structural tube. Okay. You're a KSP magician. Thank you. Would you want the front one to be the backbone so the catcher is directly mounted to it? No. Spine and rib cage, Dave. Backbone. I, I, trust me, this, this should do this. It should work. Uh, that 
that's Tessa, you're overthinking it. All right, so now I'm gonna take another one of these suckers, go into single symmetry there. Okay. Now we're not no no we're not out of the woods here. I don't think that that many small beams are required. Let me let me finish my train of thought, Smirks. I'm only going to have to make this basically once. I'm checking against this for measurement, but this is going to be the master part right here. And then if I, it should pop right back into symmetry. One more time. And we also gotta make sure that the damn auto struts is enabled on these stupid things, on the K segments. It's better to do it now because as we duplicate it, it'll already be done over time. Last segment. <sighs> Let's just make sure we're centered to the other beams. Okay, now that I know that I'm centered, let's go back over here like this. Make sure that we got our height correct. isn't centered. Well, there was another problem. Okay, we can get rid of that, but these aren't centered correctly. Hey, laser man, did you find out how to fix the pad? I think I have the fix for the pad, yes.
don't worry, this will all go back into alignment when I uh, when we move it back into position. Watch, ready? See, now our beams are centered. Of course I screwed up on the last one. Why wouldn't I? I don't like hitting the undo button, guys. Yeah, no, bad, bad idea. The undo button can screw up your hierarchy. Just make it, make it again. You'll thank me later. Okay. Hey, Shady. How was the baseball game? Ah, my team lost, but it's okay. Uh, they didn't lose the series, so... They should be starting in about an hour. Yeah, no, no, it's just my Hocus Pocus matches. Don't worry about it. It's Halloween. I need Hocus Pocus. Okay. The Astros came back last night. Yep. They came back in the ninth. They rallied in the ninth. They scored nine runs. Played great. Can't be mad. Wow, why did I turn it off? I don't know. I don't know why you'd turn off an awesome baseball game. It was very good. That thing is an absolute unit. To quote old Cleeter there. How were the seats? They were good, Josh. Yeah, good seats. Um, yeah, very good seats. They were obstructed view to the scoreboard. I couldn't see the scoreboard. There was a big eye beam in the way. That don't matter, though. Who cares? Pretty damn good seats for for what it was. How many parts? Six hundred and eighty something, if I had to guess. Nope, eight hundred. How did I go up and park? Oh, that thing. Yeah, yeah. We don't need that. Get rid of it. Seven thirty-one. Okay. All right. So now we have our height indicator. I know where I need to... I know how tall this thing needs to be. Let's just make a... Let's use one of the lines on the ground. The double hash marks right there is how tall one of these trolleys needs to be. Okay, save.
You're building us a higher EQ structure, a rocket or a bridge. Train tracks. Train tracks. These, this, what I have set up here is your railroad ties. That's your railroad ties and your bolts to hold the, hold the thing together. Now I'm making the rails. Because it's a train. At the end of the day, Swishio, yeah, it's a train. I just need to borrow some parts from this. Yep. Get rid of that. All right, so we got to build the top to the top of those double hash marks, right? And I'm probably going to do that. I'm going to use this piece because I know that that's the right diameter. So we're going to do that, right? And then we're going to edit the fairing. Uh, that might bind up on stuff. Okay. Now what we're going to do, watch this. We're going to merge. We will merge the craft file with itself. Yeah, Josh, it's totally worth it. No, you need to build the tower in segments on the ground and then use a crane to stack them at the launch site. No. Watch this. No, oh, first you have to build the crane with smaller cranes.
That ninth inning, though. I mean, can't expect to hit two grand slams in every game, I suppose. I know copy paste parts. You can't, Sanchai. You can't copy and paste fairings. It doesn't like it. See? See what happens if I copy it? It doesn't remake the fairing. That's why you got to do it in this particular way. Okay. Now that we have our three long tentacle arms here, watch this. Ready? out of the woods uh, yet though we ain't out of the woods yet That's, that's what I, oh yes, yes, this is. Is this game drunk? Hey 95, what's up bleh, bleh. I see everything is going well. <laughs> yeah. Everything is going bleh right now. Yeah, that's how that works. Cool. Discovery. Yep, that's Not what done. I wanted that strut strutted to. Yes, itself. Yeah, how about you actually strut to something useful? There we go. It's going pretty bleh right now. You could say things are not coggers. Not yet. They will soon. Soon they will be coggers. Uno Trezzi, six month resub. Thanks, man. Is the, or is that six? There's that six months of prime sub. I don't know. Uno, you tell me. I don't even know how that works anymore. I'm a dinosaur in KSP or er, in streaming years. What's next for Lucy? Uh, its solar panels are unfurled, uh, and it's just coasting for a little while. The next thing I think is an Earth Grav Assist, if I'm remembering the trajectory correctly, guys. Am I? Yeah, it's an Earth Grav Assist in 2024. Thanks, Nick.
Did he get both the panels locked? I'm pretty sure that's under control, yeah. This is just basically the cartilage that's going to hold this whole thing, the whole rib cage together. I don't know why it's not letting me attach to this stuff. It's very strange. I don't know why it won't let me run the strut to this thing. Correction, first grab assist is in 2022 and the second one is in 2024. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. An orange peanut for me? Well, I respect you. Okay. Give me a 3.7 structural tube. 3.7 structural tube will go all, all the way up here at the very top, like that. And then... Discovery, go at throttle up. I don't know why it won't do that. That's very annoying. Jasper! Seems like a lot of parts already. You're very observant. How many parts is your Mechazilla going to be, 95? I just had a very, very, very hard deja vu. That was strange. Did, did they just change something in the Matrix? Real question is, Graf Shark, how much do clothes cost in the Matrix? It's almost like I've been to this place before, yes. Mm -hmm. four. That should work. I think. I think that should work. I'm worried about this. I'm wondering if the game understands that I gizmoed that strut and it's attached to this thing now. If it's not, uh, well, we're gonna have a. Pretty awesome fireworks display here. Does the expanse get any better? I watch the first couple of episodes. It's pretty caca. Uh, yeah, I don't know why in God's name you're judging it, uh, a series based off of two episodes. That's a little weird. Why would you do that? So you two episodes isn't enough to know if any series is good or not. By that logic, Breaking Bad is terrible. Yeah, yeah it gets better, dude. Just give it some time.
Breaking Bad is terrible, though. strong enough. Close. See, watch right there. It's sagging on one side. We're going to have to have tie-ins. Yeah, okay. It's an unpopular opinion, but I'm okay with it. Uh, how's that working out for you, Course? Probably not making a lot of friends, dude, to be honest with you. I mean, I I liked it. I thought Breaking Bad was pretty good, man. The real question... The real question, though, Chad, is uh, you like Huey Lewis in the news? There, are, you know, the early stuff was a little too new wave for my taste, but when sports came out in '83, they really came into the remote, came into their own commercially and artistically. Seven, they released this. Four, their most accomplished album. I think the track they really remember the most is the track Hip to Be Square. I forget what he says. A song so catchy, you might not listen to the lyrics, but you should, because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends, but it's a personal statement by the band itself. Hey, chat! Try getting a reservation at Dorcia now, you frickin' stupid bum! I know Axiom is amazing. It's a great movie. Just awesome. Off topic, but have you ever experimented with Bendy Tech? Uh Yeah, I I invented it. Flappy Tech, from back in the day, right? Cadby, from the consulate, right? This is weird. Matt, I prefer chemical warfare to... Tessie, you... Okay. You... All right. Yep. Nope.
Nice, but it does. Yeah, 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 95, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Nah, I'm good, Tessa, right now. I want to finish this. I want to finish this before we start up Space News. I got to make the tower strong enough to not deflect when we, you know, put the thing out. Because if we, uh... If the tower can't hold itself up, it ain't gonna hold a booster up and catch arms, that's for sure. All right, let's see if we can see if there's any deflection there. Yeah, there seems to be a little bit. It is swaying. She's bending around. She's it's definitely flapping around a little bit. Not by much, but it definitely is. I don't know if that's just KSP or what. Let's see. I want to see if it's deflecting down here. Getting any going to deflect if I set every one of these damn things to root. That's for sure. That might get a little bit wonky with the hierarchy down the road, though. working. We could strut that top piece to root and it definitely wouldn't move. That's like tying a, or drawing a strut from there to there. It's definitely not going to move now. Cool. Sweet. Sweet. Nice. She still moves a little bit. Are these these aren't full of fuel or anything, are they? I'm gonna say it, it wants to lean back. It wants to lean this way. Maybe that's because the SRBs are stronger or heavier than the fairings. But that ain't deflecting too bad. We'll roll with it. We'll roll with it. See what it does. Almost getting green physics. What does mine say? Sweet! <laughs> Would a ground anchor be helpful? Uh, it would be helpful in making this a lot harder to use. Yeah, sure. Nah, foo, I don't need ground anchors. It's better to just make a nice heavy pad, seriously. Hmm. 
Biggest tower ever. It's pretty beastly, man. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it would help if I set some of these to grandparents' struts so I actually can utilize them and it's not just frigging dead weight. No wonder this thing deflected. I mean, I set those to root. Didn't realize they were set to disabled. I mean, Smirks, we were, if you're still here, we were talking about a, you were talking about a little earlier. We probably don't need this many eye beams, but also want to make it look like it. Remember, this is just a fun build, so if we were building this for mission mode, it probably wouldn't be this many parts. I would probably find a way to make it kind of look like it, but not use as many pieces as what we're using right now. the idea, Tessa. Somebody got a lot of strikeouts. Alright. So, now the carrier here, huh? Huh. How are we going to do this? Yeah, Foo Face for a root or a heaviest part. Yeah, that actually might be the might not be the worst idea doing it that way. Yeah. All right. So at the end, the root end of the hydraulics, we're gonna need. I won't put the hydraulics in just yet. Hey, Fenway. Hey, SLS. How you doing? Okay, the carrier is almost one segment tall. Thumper it is. This thing is going to be ridiculous. No, SpaceX is not made this way. Hold on. It's made. It's made like this.
Serious question, though. After learning about the undue memory stuff with Unity and Kerbal, how long did it take you to get out of your muscle memory from 3D modeling? Um, not very long. A week. Maybe. Building the airport at a pillager outpo outpost, attracting interesting clientele. I am building my carriage out of an SRB because Kerbal. Understand? You know what? We don't need these parts. Just leave them. Leave them off. This structure moves itself? Ah. Uh, kind of. I'll explain more in a moment. Huh. All right, just take that off for a moment. All right, let's put the hydraulics in now. How many of these do you think we're gonna need? No damp, well, Damping might actually be something we want for going up and down. I'll shut it off initially. Yeah, we'll shut it off initially. Yeah, to an extent, Smirks, but yeah. I might put damping on the last one that's attached. Chopsticks? Something like that. got to see how many of these we're going to need. Let's get a cow controller. Up and down. Go into action group mode. Target extension. Target extension. Target extension. Gotta add these to target. Paste the hydraulic curve or the curve for animation over each hydraulic. That might be enough. And now Yeah, you, you remember when I said that might be enough? That should be enough.
So basically what I'm doing is I'm making up out of a bunch of hydraulics. I'm making basically something analogous to the steel cable that will be holding these things up and down. Uh, that will pull the carrier up and down. Okay, save this. Now what I have to do is a little bit of a little trick here. We know that this is the right length, so I'm gonna move this back where the editor where I can see it. Alright, so now just so I can see the difference between these, rotate that five degrees. Okay, now rotate this five degrees. Now take this local orientation because I attached it when we we're on the right axis. Should just be like this. Now the reason why I twist this is so I can see the different hydraulics. Uh, it'll make sense in a second why I did this the way that I did. It's basically how I measure wear on these things because parts do stretch in KSV because of the weird physics joints sometimes. And I know what you're saying, like, well, wait, why are, what do you mean seeing the individual pieces? I don't understand. Just, if you're asking that, just give me a second. It'll make sense in a moment. This is a very rough, di rough idea, but this is trying me trying to use bendy tech. Oh, neat. Ah, bears. Yeah. All right. So, watch. Ready. This is how you basically fool Kerbal into making a uh, 70 meter long telescoping uh, telescoping piston. In reality, I obviously don't think you can do this with hydraulics. And then we're gonna take our carriage and boop that carriage right into position. Do you think Renfro should have caught that ball in the eighth last night? It was a tough, it's a tough play. A tough play, Bola. All I know is that you can't expect to score two runs in the ALCS and win. Take that for what you will. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect, man. That's because we have ropes, cables, winches, and pulleys in real life. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you do. What am I making? Mechazilla. No explosions, 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 no explosions. Please, no explosions.
It might explode. That's why, hammer nails. I don't think it will, but it might. Not the worst outcome. We only had little explosions. We only had very, very small explosions. I know what's going on here. It's just how I place some of the struts. If you place a strut, if you attach a strut to a part that has same vessel collision on it, the end of the strut becomes collidable. That's a problem that I encountered with the, um... It's a problem I encountered with the gantry cranes. It's just on these ones here, so we just need to go in here, and I just basically need to move these struts out of the way. See, these struts are colliding with the track mechanism. Just a couple more. What is this? This rocket needs this, but yes, that's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty coggers. What's been on the docket for KSP lately? I've been out for a while. Well, I'm doing a little bit of a challenge build today. They look identical. Alright, no explodies, no explodies, no explodies, no explodies. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Please don't explode. No explodies. Why is there an ESA logo? The European Space Agency built the service module for Orion, Swishio. Also, Beppy Colombo. We're sorry, the Kraken you are trying to reach is unavailable. Please try again at a different time. Discovery, go at throttle up.
What the hell is that? What is this? What are you doing here? Oh, I know that. Yeah, that's left over from the crane shenanigans. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that. I think I have a little too much play. We have a little too much play with these things. That thing's gonna get so bent with the 20 ton booster on it. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Discovery, go and throttle up. Looks the part. She bound up. Keeps binding on the fairing segments. It'll happen again here in a second. Oh, you saw it? It jerked around a little bit. Yeah, there it goes again. Can it go faster? Uh. Yeah. It's not you. It's the lack of confidence in the Kraken. Draco, 4113 sub, thank you. And then Motorman had one before before Draco at 39. I appreciate it. I'm just asking for 88 miles an hour. The goal to have this thing actually catch a booster. It's more to demonstrate how this works than anything, guys. I mean, I'm trying to build it strong enough to be able to catch it, but... Whew. Uh... That is a little bit of a tall order. It's going to be difficult. I have play. There's too much play here. I should remake the fairing so it doesn't have play. See how there's a little bit of a gap right there? That's not, that's not really good. Um, it's the, the thing like basically is doing this, like it's, it's going like this when it's going up the track. And that's not really ideal. Thanks, Pythos. Helicopter, 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 helicopter. Well, 
Well, I'm taking offense to it. I'm offended. You offended me. You should feel bad! Look, I know the Kraken. We're very well acquainted. I know what makes it tick and what doesn't. The, the biggest problem that we're going to have is these things binding. I can already tell you that right now. Because I reused parts from, from one of my gantry cranes. That's the biggest problem we're going to have. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get this thing on target, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do that. But, once again, this thing's really only here to show how the thing works. You don't understand. These boys killed my dog. Right? I don't think you understand. These fricks killed my dog. Now, how the heck are we going to go and make that? Would having lifts on all four corners help? Uh, that's not what the real one does. Not real. I mean, not really, Pembo. Do we make it robotic? I think if we're just showing this for demonstration purposes, maybe, I don't know. Can't go to war with these people. Could you use wheels? Discovery, go at throttle up. Honestly, maybe not wheels, but rollers. Sure. Maybe somehow we can make our own linear bearings here. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Give me, get, Grimmy Gap. Four month resub. Thanks, buddy. Need a better shot of the chopsticks. Fenway. Oh, let's see. Actually, that probably has a pretty good shot. I know I shouldn't, but I kind of want to make these out of I-beams. We shouldn't. It, it's going to be too heavy, the catch arm. But then again, it needs to be strong, so... Let's, uh, we'll see where this takes us. So it looks like these go out at a pretty hard angle. So we're talking like out here, like that. Maybe 
Yeah, Switch Geo, yeah, we're all like, yeah, okay. I'm, dude, I'm still like, eh, you're gonna do what? What now? But, I mean, hey, if anybody can do it, SpaceX probably could get away with it. That's the inner bar. Okay. Nope. These are. Um, give me a five tube here. And I'm just gonna use this for spacing. Yeah, okay. I didn't get it exactly right. There. That, that should be close enough. Now there's an inner space frame going right here. And then, and then, So something like this, right? <sighs> okay. Uh, and then we're gonna need something kind of like this, right? And then I'm on. It's gonna need to go in like this and down here like that. But those other posts don't end like this. They give me the small boy right there. They do that. And then we don't have that piece there. So by getting all, I'm putting in all the bars on this thing that go straight. And by doing that, I can figure out how the truss segments kind of go together. I'm not sure. I'm guessing, guys. I don't know if I'm going right at all. I think just for strength, I'm going to make this a lot of this out of struts. It's for fun. For fun. Yeah.
Okay, we gotta hurry up because we're getting to space news. We'll do space news in about 20 minutes, I think. What scares you about this and the real one is the torque when it's holding the booster. Yeah, but... Guys, do you... Alright. For, for Christ's sake. I haven't, like... I don't mean to bark up your tree, but everybody's been saying that all day. Oh, I'm not sure it's gonna, it's gonna hold the booster. Do you think SpaceX is just gonna put something out there? SpaceX. SpaceX. They launch people into space, remember? Do you think they're just going to put something out there, have it try to catch the booster, and be like, Oh, oh, we didn't realize that there would be that much torque. Oh, it's going to fall over. Oh, oh, silly ass. Let's just rebuild our multi-million dollar launch pad. <laughs> no big deal. Bro, come on. Like, oh, I'm worried about the torque. Really? Are you, are you, though? Like, yeah, it's going to be something weird. It's definitely going to be a little bit bizarre, but, like... Oh, you know, do you think SpaceX would risk it? They would, do you think they'd even bother risking it? That doesn't make any sense. There's no revert button in real life. Like, I bet they did their homework, but I still can't bet it in my mind. Ah, okay. See, now, all right, that makes more sense, man. Because, like, I've been hearing that all day. You know, they, they won't do that. They won't do that. I'm like, okay. Pog Pog. Blue Origin is considering entering a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Transportation Command to study the use of rockets to deliver military cargo around the around the world. SpaceX was the first rocket company to sign such an agreement. Oh boy, it's happening. Scott said something eventually will happen to that tower, but I do agree. I do agree they're not taking the chances. Yeah, something is gonna happen to the tower. It's gonna catch a freaking booster. Kinda ran out of time with this, but I do want to give you guys a demonstration to see if this thing actually friggin' works. Kind of just throwing this together, making it, making it fast.
Yeah, I can make a better. I can make it better than that, but it's all right. SNC revived, dude. I'm trying to finish this. Do you really need for the chopsticks to get that low? You gotta pick stuff up off the ground, dude, remember? This might cause explosions. I need to pick up Starship as well, Iman. That's not going to hold up anything. The hinges are the weak point. I think a counterweight on the back side might help. No. to use a hybrid bearing to make that work. How would I do that? Hmm. Yes, yes, this is in fact normal behavior.
Yeah, I saw, I saw it smirks. It's because I reused the slide the slide bearings that I have. Uh, Oh, well, that's good. We ran out of electrical. I reused the bearings that I had from, um, words, the crane. It's because we started this thing in the extended position. That's why it's doing that. So we got to start with the catcher arm with the hydraulic closed. Like uh, that. I want to hang a booster from it. Like, I want to do that. I think strut cross raising will help the guy too, but you can find anything that flex too. Mm. Yeah, but see, all right. I don't mean to be like, well, SpaceX doesn't do it. Well, theirs doesn't do that. Theirs doesn't have some like cross bracing there or anything. There's a good reason for that, Smirks, and I think it's just because of the play, dude. We can reduce play on this. Wouldn't be too hard. I just gotta... We gotta mess with some things, that's all. Uh, Damast, I don't think it's going to hold. This will sag like crazy because my hinge design... And my hinge design for this is poop. Poop. I made the hinge wrong anyway. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I see how that goes together. Interesting. That's dude, that's smart. Yeah, this is this is wrong anyway. I just want to see it get destroyed. They can also use multiple connection iron or you can probably use a ring. Yeah. It's... There's ways to get around that, Dave. was fun we can work on this a little bit more after space news guys i'll remake the arms uh i'll remake the catcher arms with a much much stronger design but uh let's do some space news shall we and then who knows maybe we'll launch a little play rocket off of this thing who knows but we do have our little bulk of Jika pad and stuff that's kind of neat So I am going to stop. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take like 15 minutes. I'm gonna grab something to eat and then when when I get back we'll 
We'll keep working with this. We'll do. We'll just have a fun project day with the Starship catch pad. Boco Chica. Yep. Bilco Chica. Baba Baba Chica. Val Val Chica. I see it, Beno. Oh, that picture does not suck. Bono, Chica. Bono, you want them to get Bono? Let's see. Not even posted to... Uh, Not even posted yet. Wow. Well. Oh. oh my God. Just leave this picture up while I go AFK. I can do that. All right. Here, let me bring the let me get the break message up up here. Uh, we'll be right back in ten forgizzies. All right, I'll be back in a second. This feels strange. This feels strange and I don't like it. We'll show this picture and we'll dissect it later. I'll be right back.
Why have you stopped playing this music? Oh, the song literally just ended. All right, cool. Excellent. I'm back. The song is 7 minutes 26 seconds and I have heard it 1.5 times. That means that it has been about 11 minutes, meaning that EJ is in fact late as per usual. I said I'd be back in 15 minutes. Did you get through college with those math skills, serious? Got the game on? I watched the first inning. Uh, now I do. Well, I wasn't here. Think somebody would just go in and weigh on something, weigh in on something? It's like going way in without knowing what they're talking about. Think somebody would do that. Give me one second. I gotta get the game on. Someone like Eric Berg? <laughs> Maybe. There we go. All right, let's get rid of that and get rid of the catch your arm stuff. I'll save that for later. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Discovery, go at throttle up. Don't need that. Go over here like this. All right. Phil, I don't want to watch the Lucy launch. I'm so, st I'm still bummed out that I missed it. <laughs> I don't want to watch the highlight reel. <laughs> I don't want to watch it. So RFI. Okay. There's that. That's good. Got those pictures. Got that picture. Got that picture. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Spodrum. Nine month resub. Was looking at Fenway Park on Google Maps. Really unique grandstand setup. Squeezed in against that Lansdowne Street. So Green wants to, dude. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's the that's the mascot, dude. Yeah, Fenway's Fenway's got a really short left field wall and a really, really long right field roll right field wall. Yeah, it's it's asymmetric. Some some ballparks are like that. Most ballparks are symmetric, but Fenway is not. And when I say Fenway is right in the middle of the city, I mean it's in the middle of the city. There is quite literally no place to park. You've got to take the train or score one of these parking spots early. There's a couple of parking garages down here. but Yep. I was there last night, dude. We were up in here. Looking this way. Up the, well, So that's right field grandstand. But yeah. There it is. 100 bucks to park on game day, something like that, Jim. Yeah. I, uh, we, we took the green line. See the, the, no, not Lansdowne. Uh, Fenway. See over here. We took that one. And the green line, this is the green line D, D train. Uh, it goes. 
green line D line goes here to here goes over here that's Chestnut Hill then there's Newton Highlands or Newton Center Newton Highlands and then it takes a right there's Elliot Wobbin uh, Woodlawn and then that's the terminus right there we parked at Riverside plenty of parking out there I drove tough enough over here last night How did you get tickets? It must have been expensive for 